I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. We're joined tonight by Peter Gammons and Jose Mota. It's the World Baseball Classic from Petco Park in San Diego. It's the top of the first inning. And the starting pitcher for Cuba has already been removed. Or Mari Romero, after giving up two infield singles and a walk with one out, was taken out. And Odeline, the right-hander, on in relief. It is one to nothing. Team Japan, two down. And that ball, a splitter, fouled into the crowd off to the left. And the seventh place hitter, Ogasawara, 37 home runs last year for the fighters in the Japanese leagues. And he's trying to do some damage here. Odeline trying to get Cuba off the hook. And he just fought that pitch off. He did a great job of fighting that off because he had been swinging poorly at Odeline's splitter, but he fought that one off. He stayed back, and he was just trying to put the ball in play. There is Ichiro at third base, Matsunaka at second base, Tamura, who got the RBI when he got hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. When Odeline first came in, he's at first. In the dirt, pretty good eye right yeah. there. They've had a hard time laying off that pitch. Well, he's battling him very well. I mean, that's. But I think if you're Odeline, you're going to see another one. And it's a matter of whether he can lay off of it again or whether Odeline will throw a strike with it. VCO Andre Odeline from uh, Kamagay, Kamagay. And Odeline, 26 years old. Eugenio Velez from the Cuban dugout. Sadaharu O, oh, the manager of Japan from the Team Japan dugout. And they'll all be running now. Three balls, two strikes, two down. Ichiro, Matsunaka, Tamura. Odeline ready. There go the runners. And he just got a piece of that one. Rolling it foul. And there is a certain philosophy that it appears that the Cuban pitchers have. They had the bases loaded. He got behind 2-0. Oh, he kept throwing splitters. They figure giving up one on a walk is better than giving up three or four on an extra base hit. So with even with the count three and two, you see him still throwing the splitter. Uh, Jim Palmer had that theory. Well, there are a lot. I mean, I, I don't think it's a bad theory, John. Because this is one of the guys who really can yeah. hit the long ball. That's, uh, depending on who's in the batter's box, I don't think it's a bad theory. Emai is on deck. Three men on, two men out. There they go. And he has walked in a run. He finally threw him a fastball, but he missed with it. So Ichiro comes in to score. And now it is two to nothing. You know, one of the things I've always felt about pitching, John, is if you stand there as Odeline did, throw like six straight splitters, it is very difficult for you to get your rhythm and throw a fastball for a strike. I mean, you've thrown six splitters in a row and you've gotten three of them over the plate. I think you have to throw another one. It is very difficult just to get a rhythm on a fastball after you haven't thrown one for six or seven pitches. And as they did in Saturday's ball game, Team Cuba has had the bullpen going. Since the game started, the starting pitcher goes out there and the bullpen immediately gets busy. This is Emai, the third baseman. And a slider in zone one. Emai has had one hit in five at bats. Now, Iwamura, who was the, the starting third baseman for most of the tournament, he strained a hamstring in uh, trying to score a run against Korea on Wednesday. Has not played since. Down and away, one ball, one strikes, and uh, they miss his bat. Iwamura had 30 home runs last year, a 319 average. Imai hit over 300 for the Chiba Lotte Marines, Bobby Valentine's club in the Jap Japanese leagues, but only eight home runs. That will go back out of play. But a lot of pitches thrown by Cuban pitchers in this inning. That was the 41st pitch thrown by Team Cuba in this first inning. And John, you mentioned the fact that one run scored when the, he hit a batter and then they walked in a run and they haven't hit a ball out of the infield this entire ball, uh, first inning. <laughs> and they have two runs. And not often has so little turned into yeah. so much. Although if it, if it could just hit one through the infield here, it could turn into a lot more. Yeah. And he steps off the slab. Indeed, Nishioka and Matsunaka had infield singles. Ichiro had a walk. Then Tamura got hit by a pitch. Satozaki struck out. Now Ogasawara has walked. And that's that's what they've turned into two runs. The best hit ball is a slow ground ball to shortstop <laughs> so far. One and two the count. Three men on. Up the middle and he gets the big base hit. Matsunaka scores right behind him. Tamura. Ogasawara stops at second, but Imai 
comes through in the clutch for Team Japan, and now they've got a big early lead. Well, what he did there, he tried to get away with a fastball. And the good approach there, Maimai is going back through the middle. And watch, he tries to get a fastball over the outside part of the plate. He throws it over the middle of the plate. And Emai just hits it right back through the middle. He doesn't try to pull it. You can see he just fights it off back through the middle. And Sadaharu O oh leads the cheering from the dugout. Does a little coaching as well. <laughs> and uh, Norberto Gonzalez is going to come in. A left-hander from the Team Cuba bullpen. With a left-handed hitter, Aoki. The ninth base hitter coming up. And then three more lefties plus a switch hitter after him but so far things not working out well for no. Cuba and they just have given away too much here well the, the walks but again the first walk I think was a force walk after the base hit with Nishioki at first base Nishioka at first base he's a threat to steal I think he disrupted Romero and he ended up walking Ichiro and then they had the infield hit and then from there everything just escalated And so Odeline, the second pitcher of the game, departs. And many of you joined us in progress here after the basketball game. So let's go back and give you a quick review of how we got to 4-0 Japan here in the first inning. The starting pitcher was Ormari Romero with a one out. Nishioka beat this ground ball out the shortstop. Later he stole second base. Ichiro then walked. Matsunaka was next. The runners took off. And this slow ground ball to short beat it out. And the bases were loaded, at which point Matsunaka had knocked him out of the game. Odelin came in and he hit Tamura to knock in the first run. That's how Nishioka was sent home to make it one nothing. Then Satozaki had struck out, but Ogasawara drew a bases loaded walk. Ichiro scored to make it two nothing. Finally, Imai he got a solid single to center, and that brought home both Matsunaka and Tamura, and a four nothing Team Japan lead. Cuba's in a big hole very early on here. Or Mari Romero, the starting pitcher, lasted only one third of an inning, charged with three runs and two hits. Although none of those runs actually scored while he was in there. And well, I, I actually thought he was throwing the ball pretty well, John. Again, I, I think he got caught up when Nishioka was at first base and ended up walking, you know, Ichiro, and then the next ball just a weak ground ball in the hole at shortstop that loaded the bases. And once you get the bases loaded everything becomes more difficult for pitchers to get out of the jam. I mean they have very little margin for error because they don't want to fall behind and have to groove one. So you, you make a lot of pitches that end up in the same situation where you end up walking guys or you hit guys. So now here is Norberto Gonzalez and there's a drag bunt attempt by Aoki but it goes foul. And again ordinarily Joe you expect with two men on like this. A guy's going to be bunting to knock in a run. Well, but again, John, we talked earlier about the difference in style of play. Um, the, the style of play in Asia is much different than it is in the Caribbean. And in Cuba, it's a much different style of play from the American style as well. That was hit very slowly. And Gurriel just gets him in time. And the inning is over. There's one slow ground ball that the... Team Japan runner does not beat out, but it is 4 0 Japan, Cuba coming up. Team Japan has jumped ahead a four run first inning against Cuba. As now Cuba, at least they know they've got the comfort of having an entire game to try and catch up. Here's the Team Cuba batting order now presented by MLB 06, the show. Eduardo Perret leads off at shortstop. Then Michel Enriquez, a 448 hitter, third base. Yulieski Gurriel at second base, a very impressive young talent. Ariel Borrero at uh, first base, a powerful hitter. It'll be Frederic Cepeda in left field. He's hit safely in every game of the tournament. Osmani Urrutia, a 447 average, a perennial batting champion in Cuba. Yo Yoandre Garlobo hitting over 400 in the Cuban leagues this year. Ariel Pestano, the catcher, hits eight. The veteran and uh, Alexei Ramirez is the center fielder batting ninth hitting over 400 in the tournament. And there's the panoramic look at beautiful Petco Park in San Diego. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan joined by Peter Gammons and Jose Mota. And uh, we're very happy to have you 
the final of the World Baseball Classic. There were 16 countries represented when this all started in Tokyo 17 days ago. Down to two and probably not the two that most of us expected. Bluffing the bunt is Perret taking a strike on the outside from Matsuzaka the Team Japan pitcher and he is a battle tested veteran 2 and 0 in this tournament. He's been excellent in both of his starts allowing only four hits in nine innings a slider and he just did miss on the inside with that one two and one now John you mentioned that you know it's not the teams that a lot of people thought I must admit it's not the two that I thought but it doesn't surprise me that these two are here I felt like it'd be in the one group that ball is a slider hit a long way to left field way back there that ball is a home run Adios Pelota. so Cuba strikes back immediately and now it is four to one Japan. And that was the look at the cheering down in Parque Central in Havana which is very close by where Joe Morgan visited when we were there several years ago the Esquina Caliente and there's a lot of folks out there in Parque Central rooting on Team Cuba down in Havana tonight. Well. I that's to say that was important John is a real understatement because once you fall behind you can kind of start feel sorry for yourself. Well that one swing gets the Cuban team back on track of saying that hey we have 27 outs to go. We know we can score four runs. Michel Enriquez one of the top hitters in Cuba not hitting that one on the tournament. And that's another hanging breaking ball by Matsuzaka fouled off the right field line and it is on two. John in my brackets I had. The United States and Japan one and two. Take a look at the breaking ball. It just kind of hangs there. And not only did it hang, it was in the middle of the plate. Look out. He buzzes it right under the chin, and Enriquez shoots a quick glance right out at Matsuzaka after that one. I had the United States one and two, and I had Cuba and the Dominican, you know, one and two, and uh, Dominican and Cuba one and two in their division, even though we knew that Venezuela and Puerto Rico were also good teams. That breaking good ball pitch. in under the hands and Emai throws out Enriquez. There is one away. Well, that ended up being a backup slider, which is always a good pitch, especially if you get it in on the hands. Well, there, there you see the spin on the breaking ball that Perret hits out of the ballpark. But it, the real key is it's up and it's in the middle of the plate. I mean, if it's up and away, he, he got a chance of keeping it in the ballpark. But that was up and in the middle. Now here is Yulieski Guriel, the right-handed hitter. Ooh, a mighty cut by the exciting young player, and the count is 0-1. When the home run was hit, this was the reaction at the Parque Central. Well, they could tell it was gone the moment it was hit, too, John. <laughs> And uh, perhaps, must have good audio there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We kind of had a, a feeling ourselves. Yeah, but they oh, were in the park. That's <laughs> true. They backdoored him with that. That ball. That had a little movement coming back to the outside, and it is 0 2 now to Guriel. Guriel. Everybody's been talking about him. He doesn't have the best average of anybody in this tournament, but he's created some buzz. From deep in the hole, Kawasaki throws him out. Two men gone. Nice extension on the throw there. A lot of times we see a shortstop go in the hole. They want to use their arm, but they don't extend it across the diamond. And if you do not have a just a rifle for an arm, that's what you need to do. Extend your arm so that it goes across the diamond and stays there, stays in the air. So two down, nobody on, and here is Ariel Borrero. Borrero with Via Clara was hitting 344 when they stopped the season. To get ready for this tournament and to his own one. He was badly fooled on that one. Well, his last three pitches, John, were 94, 94, 95. So if I'm walking up there, I'm looking for some gas to him. And he threw him a, a nice changeup. Oh, and won the count. Fastball up and away. And fastball, according to the radar gun here at the ballpark, was 96 miles an hour. Well, he's we, we knew he could throw the ball hard. One and one the count. Another yeah. fastball fouled back to the screen. But that's not exactly where you want it. <laughs> a 
One ball, two strikes. Saruharu O, the uh, fabled manager of Team Japan. One and two. Oh, the splitter struck him out. That was that was nasty. The leadoff homer by Parrett. Team Cuba gets one back. It's four to one Japan. Top of the order coming up. The leadoff man, Kawasaki, drops down a bunt. Pistano with the throw. He got it. And again, a sensational defensive play by Ariel Pestano, the excellent Cuban veteran catcher. I didn't really think he had a shot on that one, John. The ball, watch out. This is perfectly executed. Look at that. Just right off the end of the bat. And he is out there very quickly. I mean, and it wasn't right out in front of the plate. I mean, he went up the first third baseline to get that ball. Beautiful play. Man, he only got him by half a step yeah. or less than that yeah. even. I didn't think he was going to get him at all. I didn't I didn't think they had a prayer. Here is Nishioka, the switch hitter. He showed bunt and then pulled the bat back into his ball one. Ichiro is on deck. Four to one, Team Japan leading in the second inning. The third pitcher of the game, Norberto Gonzalez, is in there for Team Cuba. Romero went one third, charged with three runs. That one in at the knees for a called strike. One ball, one strike. Odeline was in there for one third, charged with one run and one hit. But all four of the runs actually scored while Odeline was in the game. And Gonzalez came on to get the final out of the inning. And that slider is inside for a ball. Well, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion at Esquina Caliente in Parque Central about whether or not. Eugenio Velez took his starting pitcher out a little too too quickly. Well, he gave up a comebacker, two infield ground ball singles, and a walk. That's all he gave up. Well, I mean, he'll probably have to explain it if they do not come back and win. If they come back and win, everybody will say he made the right move. Yeah, I'm so we of, won't know yet. I'm one of those kind of people myself. Yeah, we won't know for yeah, a he while. He won the game in the discussion. Right. I'm a bottom line man, Joe. Two and two the count. I think I think the one thing that fans should notice is the contrast in styles of these two ball clubs. I mean the Cubans are really emotional. They play with a lot of fire. There's a lot going on when you watch you know Japan play they're calculating they're more scientific everything is calculated to, to, to make it work. I mean that's why you see so many players trying to bunt you know and taking pitches and doing so many other little things. They do all the little things you know it's kind of a science like to them and I think the Cuban players show a little more fire play with a little more emotion. Three and two the count. That uh, is a hanging breaking ball drilled foul off the right field line into the Team Japan bullpen area. Three and two the count. I saw a column today Dan Shaughnessy of the Boston Globe talking about why he's actually rooting for the Cuban team to win just because he he likes their style of ball. That is strike three swinging. Nishioka went up out of the strike zone chasing one. Two down. Now let's go down to our colleague, one of the uh, preeminent baseball writers in the land, Peter Gammons. Well, John, and, I, and Joe was talking about the passion of the Japanese players. What's interesting is Ichiro was asked what part of the American game would he like to take back to Cuba. He said the passion. Well, he's played very passionately in this series. It's been interesting watching him in the dugout tonight. He has been the most animated player, cheering on his teammates, yelling. It's, really, it's been really fun to watch. Yeah, he, I mean, he said that in, in Japan, the players are very reserved. They don't right. have that well, kind we of did, passion. You can see that. I mean, so... But remember now, when Ichiro came here, that's basically the way he played. So some of the American way has rubbed off on him in playing the game. And I think that's a good thing. But I think the fact that he is so dedicated and whatever, I think is rubbed off on some of his teammates of watching the way that he goes out, stretches, and gets prepared to play a game. So I think it's been a win-win for both sides. Foul back out of play, two and one now to Ichiro. He because, walked his first time. Because the players in Seattle tell me about his preparation. They said, you can't believe what he does to get ready for a game every day. I mean, he prepares just, you know, like unbelievable. He prepares like he's getting ready to do a marathon or something every single day. Two and one the count. Line drive, caught at short. A leaping catch by Eduardo Perret to take away a base hit for Ichiro. Four to one, Team Japan. Cepeda coming up. 
Now that is the look at the uh, the big screen outdoors in Parque Central in uh, Havana, where the, a very large gathering is watching this ball game live. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, and uh, welcome back to El Clásico Mundial de Baseball, Patashiwa Petco Park, Ni Orimas. And there's a called strike. So I'm getting into the whole, uh, you know, international thing now, Joe. I, I can feel you, John. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike to count. And that's foul back out of play. Cepeda, Frederic Cepeda. And he's had a, a, an excellent tournament for Cuba. Cepeda hitting 364, five runs batted in. And that's a foul out of play against Matsuzaki. Cepeda from Sancti Spiritus hit 307 or was hitting 307 during the uh, the Cuban season this year. One ball, two strikes, and that's back out of play. One and two, the count to Cepeda. Urrutia is on deck, and then Garlobo. The next two hitters after Cepeda are both hitting over 400 in the Cuban League, the Serie Nacional, which is what they call the uh, the, the Cuban League and the, the schedule they play. Two and two, the count now. John, last night we saw Uihara pitch, you know, well on Saturday for Japan, and I'm watching. Ooh. Yeah, strike three call. I'm watching Matsuzaka, and he is pitching almost the same way. High fastballs and a low splitter. Which the latter is what we just saw a moment ago. You know, I was talking about what Ichiro has brought, you know, to his teammates in Seattle and what they've given to him. This is Ichiro <laughs> long before the game. Look at this. 2 145 in the afternoon, he's getting ready to play a game at 6 o'clock. So, you know. I mean that's what you call preparation and getting ready and again I think that's what he has brought to his teammates in, in Seattle and they brought a little bit of that fire and, 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 and a little more of the passion for playing the game. I'm sure that you know Ichiro has always loved the game but to show it more outwardly is, is what we're seeing now. We're seeing it here in the World Baseball Classic and I expect it to carry on through the season. You're going to see him be a little more vocal. He started to be a little more vocal at the end of the season last year about you know they weren't playing as well and so forth. So I think it's great that you know he he probably feels now that he's part you know of, of Major League Baseball here and he can take that leadership role. There are not many players for whom I have more respect than each. No no. I mean there's. There's some that I would have as much respect yeah. for, but none more than Ichiro, who, remember when he came to this country, he was the first right. Japanese position player ever to come here. Yeah. So to prove that, number one, that he belonged here, that was a, a lot of pressure. But remember, he had the hopes of an entire nation riding on whether or not he had success. So maybe he had more pressure to succeed than any player in the history of the game. Yeah. When he, he came definitely had a lot of pressure on him. And not only did he succeed, he succeeded in a huge way. He won the batting title, hit 350 his first year here. He's had 200 hits in each of his first five seasons. The only player in Major League history to do that. One and two, the count. Strike three. He powered a fastball right by Urrutia, a perennial batting champion in Cuba. Let's go down to Peter Gammons now. Well, just to add to what you were talking about, Ichiro, and Joe was talking about how he was out there at 145. I was here, and there wasn't another player that appeared out of the dugout for another 45 to 50 minutes. What's fascinating is how hard he worked at his throwing, and also in Seattle, one of his complaints has been that he hasn't been able to find teammates to go out and loosen up his arm with early in the afternoon and prepare for each day's game. Wow. Peter, since you're out there that early, maybe you can go up to Seattle and warm yeah. up. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> and he says you're out there with him. <laughs> All right. Peter, we'll, we'll pass a hat up. Yeah. Here. We'll, we'll get you a glove. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you a glove and get you a plane <laughs> ticket up to Seattle. I would love that. <laughs> and Ichiro throws hard. We'll get you a little sponge to put in it. <laughs> Owen won the count to Garlobo. 
Ichiro, who wins that gold glove every year, and in addition to being a, a guy who's a threat to win a batting champion every every season. But I think that's important because I mean he wants to go out and, and there's the one thing about baseball is you like the camaraderie of your teammates. You'd like someone to be out there with you. I mean that feels the same way about stretching and doing what you're doing and be your companion. Gar Lobo, he's been getting a lot of base hits. He's been an impressive hitter during this tournament. That's his 12th hit in 22 at bats. He was hitting 524 in the tournament coming in. Well, you see the target is away. It's a fastball that runs in, but look at the way that he attacks the ball. He stays back, stays behind it, and then just goes the other way. The, the one of the things that we're going to point out at, eventually in this ball game and show it to you in pictures is that the difference in the approaches from, say, the Cuban team at in the batter's box and what the Japanese players approach is when they're in the batter's box. I think you're going to see find it very interesting to see how differently their approaches are. And there are reasons for that of course. Lugar Lobo into the stretch where Matsuzaka had struck out three in a row now a ball in the dirt and guard Lobo moves over to second base as Sakuzaki the catcher has to retrieve that one. So now with Pestano at the plate, a chance to pick up an RBI. Four to one, Japan leading Cuba, last of the second inning. As Pestano, and Pestano is the one guy who does not have the big bat during the the Cuban season. I mean, he's in there because he runs that pitching staff. He kind of runs the the club on the field, but he hit, hitting only 259 during the regular season this year. But you know what he is a leader and we've seen him lead we've seen him even in tough circumstances still stand up and be the guy. So a guy like that when he gets in a situation like this John it wouldn't be wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't get a base hit at least have a good at bat because there's something about those types of guys that you know when they get in certain situations they do seem to rise a little bit to the occasion. Well the, the whole club in the dugout is not only standing but applauding cheering him on nice breaking ball there and a two and oh count through in the breaking ball yeah. it's two and one well they uh, both of these teams pitchers they keep you off balance they do not throw dead red when they're behind two and oh or three and one we saw that even with the bases loaded so you can never really sit on a pitch but in some ways I think that makes you a better hitter because you can't look for a pitch you just have to read the ball and go get it That is foul. Well, he got one there. He was actually yeah. a little quick in that fastball. Two and two. Ramirez, the ninth place hitter, would be next. There's Matsuzaka. And like just about every starting pitcher that's pitched in this tournament for Japan, he throws strikes. Yeah. And I think that has been the real key to their success. And, you know, he, but we can't forget that the Korean guys did just about everything better than everybody else you know, as far as yeah. pitching and defense. Popped up, foul, that will come back and go out of play. Satozaki, the catcher, goes back, but it is well back in amongst the spectators. Two and two the count. Well, there are some Cuban fans who were at the, the game tonight from who, most of whom I guess live in the San Diego area Cuban expatriates we understand that the place to go though Joe if you want some Cuban food is not far from this ballpark downtown San Diego Andres the good Cuban food there will be there'll be a, a wild party there tonight especially if they win good pitch Matsuzaka strikes out the side He's got four strikeouts in the game already Matsunaka the power hitter coming up. The World Baseball Classic from San Diego, the final. Japan four, Cuba one. We start the third inning now. And the look at Petco Park from the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its air fleet, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear for Terra tires featuring silent armor technology. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Peter Gammons, Jose Mota also here with us. That ball is a foul back out of play. As this is Matsunaka, the big slugger. Who has not done much slugging in this tournament? Only two runs battered in, no homers, and his hit in this game was an infield single to shortstop. And he's, he's very late on that one. <laughs> a little tardy on that fastball. You're right. On to the count to Matsunaka. 
will be followed by he's hitting cleanup. He's got Tamura and Sakuzaki following him. He hit 46 homers last year. Tamura, who's on deck, hit 31. Going to dropping down from the side with a slider in the dirt from Norberto Gonzalez, the third Team Cuba pitcher in this game. You know, Joe, it's interesting the way the uh, this tournament play works out. There were four groups of four teams, and they would play round robin, and then after the top two teams would then move on to the next group. Neither Team Japan nor Team Cuba won either one of its first two groups. They were the runner up both times, which means that in the first World Baseball Classic, the two finalists were both wild card teams. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of wild cards going here. That's a base hit. I mean, their approach to hitting, meaning, you know, the Japanese team, is so good in that, I mean, with two strikes, he's fighting the ball off the other way. Then he gets a pitch inside, and he's able to pull it. But he's not trying to pull it. He's just reacting to the ball inside. I mean, we saw him late on a couple of fastballs. John, go the other way. Now, watch this ball inside. So he just reacts to it. He's not looking for it. Now, watch, he just pulls his hands in to pull the ball to right field. And that's what you have to do. See him pull his hands in? That's just, that's good hitting there. He wasn't trying. He didn't have in mind I'm going to pull this next pitch. But because the ball ran in on him, he just reacted to it and he was able to pull it. That's the sign of a good hitter. So there is Machunaka, the runner at first. Tamura, the hitter now. He was hit by a pitch, knocking in a run in the first inning. And he was late on a high fastball. But this, uh, the, the radar gun saying that Gonzalez is only throwing 88, 89 miles an hour, but they're swinging like he's throwing 98 well, miles an hour. His delivery, John, is very deceptive. See, when you watch a pitcher who has a deceptive motion, his fastball is probably eight to ten miles an hour faster. See, see his motion kind of gets you. Plus, he's stepping halfway to the plate when he releases. He looks like a pretty big guy out there. So he missed with that curveball one and one. So the player picks it up a little bit later. Yeah, picks it up later. That makes his reaction time shorter, of course. And and when you look at Matt Suzaka, I mean, he's got a nice, easy motion, but his ball explodes on you. Yeah, so sort of just the opposite effect. Yeah. You don't think it's coming that hard and it comes real you gotta, hard. Yeah, but you better have a good fastball if you not gonna, you know, give you the big motion. Let's take a look at his motion. And let's see how far he steps down the mound. It looks like he falls way down the mound. Look at that. See how far he comes down? I know it sounds stupid, but he's shortening his distance by about six inches. And that makes his fastball six inches faster than it would be otherwise. One ball, two strikes now to Tamura. Satozaki, the right handed hitting catcher, on deck. Four to one, Japan leading Cuba in the third inning. There's no wind blowing, by the way, at all here tonight. Now, we had a pretty good wind blowing in for the game Saturday afternoon and for much of the game Saturday night in the semifinals. But then late in that game when it was raining the, the wind stopped blowing and uh, Satozaki hit a, 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 a long home run out there over the 402 sign in deep left center. And we've had a home run already tonight by Parrett not really known as a home run hitter. Here's Satozaki on deck tried to back door with that breaking ball pretty good eye by Tamura. Three and two the count. All right now Matsunaka the runner at first he's not a base dealer. He had two steals last year Joe so you send him or not. Well I, it's not even about him it's about what what you think Tamora can do. If you think he can put the ball in play then you go ahead and send him but he's got such a short lead I don't think he's going. And uh, there's perhaps why. Yeah strike three. Let's check in with our colleague down near the team Cuba dugout Jose Mota. One thing, guys, that I'm hearing often here to my left is change your angle, meaning don't give him the same look all the time. So in other words, Jose Losega, the pitching coach, wants to make sure that Gonzalez is not always coming out of that same window right here because so far, to tell you and be honest with you, it is the best approach I have seen any team have against Cuban pitching. All right, well, that's interesting. And Jose, been, he's seen him all through the tournament, covering him here for ESPN. And by the way, Joe, I really have appreciated the, the great work 
that ESPN and ESPN Deportes has done in covering this entire tournament. This is the 39th game of this tournament. And ESPN has been able to follow every one of the ESPN Deportes has been involved in every single telecast of all 39 games. And I've been able to watch some of them on uh, MLB.tv through ESPN.com. And uh, there's our ESPN Deportes colleagues, Candido Maldonado and Juan Marichel, the great Hall of Famer in the middle, and Ernesto Jerez, the play-by-play, -play, La Voz. And there they are. And uh, Juan Marichel is speaking right now, Joe. I'd like to, I'd like to <laughs> listen in on that conversation. Well, it's it no mantenerte mucho con un solo lanzamiento o una o una misma zona, sino variar. Y esa era la forma que había que escucharla a Orlando. Eh, muy peligroso. Y tratar también de, de hacer buenos lanzamientos y, y rogar de que no te conectara con poder. Y de esa forma también, Candy, los bateadores tienen su reporte en cuanto a los lanzadores. Tres que el automático para... Sato Saki, ¿qué te decía, por ejemplo, el reporte que tú tenías al enfrentar a Nolan Ryan? Recta. Right. montarse con su recta buena. Well, I'm not exactly sure what Juan was well, saying. Well, I can understand Juan, really. I can yeah. habla enough español because he speaks <laughs> slowly. But seriously, he speaks slowly. But I was in Mexico uh, when, these, when the tournament started. I was on vacation and I was watching on Deportes. And uh, being honest with you, Candy and Ernesto, I wasn't understanding them because I speak a little bit, but they're, they were speaking so quickly I couldn't keep up. So I watched a lot of the games, you know, in, in Mexico, uh, the first few games the when they were on Deportes. And the, you're right, they did a fantastic job. Well, what was he saying then? Well, he was talking about they didn't want... Oh, Jose Mocha was listening in. Well, Juan Marshall is talking about a scouting report, and it seems like he was talking about pitching to Orlando Cepeda. How about that? Don't stay in one zone. Don't stay with one pitch for the baby ball. Yeah, I, did you hear it? I heard the Cepeda thing, and I, I, it got my ears jumping, Jose, so I knew exactly what he was talking about. I thought he was talking about But he was speaking slowly, though. See, I mean, that's the difference. If you listen to Juan talk, and then you listen to Ernesto, who's more excitable, and then you listen to Candy, who's doing his job, of course, they're more excitable. And Juan is just, Juan is being Juan. I thought he was talking about Frederic Cepeda. No, 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 he didn't say Frederic. <laughs> 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 All right, so two men on after Sakazaki drew the walk. Here is Ogasawara at second base, Matsunaka, who earlier hit a single. Sakazaki, the runner at first after walking. And Norberto, Norberto Gonzalez now facing the left-handed hitting Ogasawara, who drew a bases-loaded walk to drive in run number two for Japan in the first inning. He was bailing out on that one, but that is in there, a slider for a strike, one and one the count. Juan Marichal, 243 wins in his Hall of Fame career, and what an elegant pitcher he was, Joe. Well, he always great. threw strikes. Well, you and I, we grew up in the area, and, you know, I got a chance to really see him pitch, you know, locally there, and it was just, he was just fun to watch. I mean, he he was an artist on the mound. In center field, there is Ramirez. I guess we'll have to hold on that one. That is out number two. Two down for Japan here in the third. Matsunaka back to second. Satozaki back to first. And now Imai will come up. In Tokyo, the Team Japan victories over China 18 to 2, and then Chinese Taipei 14 to 3 and then they lost to Team Korea that was a shock at the uh, Tokyo Dome they lost their 3 to 2 then in round 2 they they lost to the United States that wasn't a shock so much as it was uh, dismaying because there was a an umpire's call that played a huge role in that outcome they beat Mexico 6 to 1 and then Korea and really shocked them again with a 2 to 1 win and they thought they'd been eliminated in that one but they stayed alive thanks to Team Mexico and this is right back to Gonzalez and now they are in the final with a chance to win it all. We're going to the last of the third. Bottom of the order and then the leadoff man, 4-1 Japan. It is 4-1 Team Japan leading Team Cuba in the final of the World Baseball Classic. We go to the last of the third, Cuba coming up. And let's check in with our colleague down to the Cuban dugout, Jose Mota. Hey, John, on more than one occasion, Cuban manager Eugenio Venez has told me this is not a team about names. It's a team of men. He means, well, the guys don't want individual recognition. But I said, 
Mr. Villas, with all due respect, after this tournament, the names of Ulesti Guriel, Pedro Lazo, and Ariel Pestano will be remembered forever, especially when they connected with international competition. Back up to you. Well, that's a good point. I, I think we, there are some guys we're going to remember. I mean, for me, it is the second baseman, Guriel, because obvi for obvious reasons, I watch that position closer than I do any other. And then you watch Yadel Marti and Lazo. I mean, those guys. But they're, they're, it's not just that they pitch well, John. When they're on the mound, they have a presence out there. And, and so you don't forget those types of pitchers. And it's the same thing with Uihara. And, and now I'm watching... Matsuzaki, these guys have a presence. I mean, <laughs> you don't forget them when you when you see them pitch. Well, here's Matsuzaka back to work now against uh, Alexei Ramirez. Ooh, that was a real tight breaking ball. 0 and 1. Ramirez heading 250 in the World Baseball Classic from uh, he plays his games in Cuba for Pinar del Rio. Eduardo Perret on deck, the leadoff man, and he got him bending back on that breaking ball. A little bit too high, apparently. One ball, one strike. Four to one. Japan leading Cuba. The, you know, the Team Japan starting pitchers have been spectacular in this series. That fastball is hammered left center field. That ball is going to be off the wall. The carom is played by Tamura. It's a stand up double for Ramirez. A couple of balls, they have really smoked. Well, the, the Cuban hitters are aggressive, and we were that was explained to us by the Dominican manager, Manny Acta. He said they're very aggressive. They like the first pitch fastball that they see, and they will hammer it. And you get the fastball, and I mean, he just rakes it in the left center field. At Parque Central in Havana. They were watching, and uh, now the live look there. We we're told about at least 1,500 fans watching the, the big screen there at uh, Parque Central, Central Park in Havana. Eduardo Perret, the leadoff man coming up, he hit a home run, he, and it was hit much like that double we just saw, just kind of a line shot that made it into the seats out there. So here's Perret. Perret, who had hit only two home runs this year for Via Clara in the Cuban League. Not a real likely home run candidate. He runs up to bunt and fouls it back out of play. Well, that tells you a little something about their approach to playing the game right there. They're not trying to get everything back at once. If he can bunt the ball on the third baseline and even beat it out and move the runner over, that would probably cinch them one more run this inning, and then it's four to two with at least five or six innings left to play. So their approach is different. You know, they're not so much on the Big Bang Theory, trying to just get them all back at once. And really, I mean, the guy hit a home run his first time. Who's looking for him to bunt right. down by three? Exactly. Runs. That's why I say it could happen, where you get back into the game. That was a hanging breaking ball he got in the first inning. And again, I think that was very important because it showed them, it just kept them from being down on themselves after giving up four in the top half of the inning. Runner at second, nobody out. Ooh. He showed Bunt. He got a fastball right toward the bill of his batting helmet. And again, he shoots a glance out at Matsuzaka. Well, <laughs> been a couple of high hard ones in yeah. there like that. Matsuzaka's got that look at his face as if, what? <laughs> you, I would throw at somebody? Come on. Are you kidding? Two and on the count. And that's a breaking ball. And again, Parrett shot the, the the glance out at him very quickly, but that's a breaking ball that hung high. But after the second one, you could tell that Parrett wasn't going to bunt again. After after this pitch here, that's the first one, the high fastball when he squared around, he wasn't going to bunt again. He was going to try to duplicate what he did in the first inning because that he took that as a personal challenge. Nonetheless, third baseman Emai plays a little bit shallow near third. That's a breaking ball called a strike. And Perrette can't believe it. And neither can the Cuban dugout. I mean, they're screaming that it was high. But I'm, I'm a little surprised he was taking all the way. Watch, he's not going to swing. So he's taking all the way. And the pitch is high, but, I mean, he wasn't even going to swing if it was down the middle. 
Three and two. And a fastball by him. Strike three. See that that's the reason you do not just give up and give a second strike to a to a guy who is ha who has good stuff like Matsuzaki has. I mean Matsuzaka will throw the fastball by you so you better be ready. I mean he takes one gets the two strikes and he makes a perfect pitch up and away and you're out. So one down here is Michel Enriquez. You got the, uh, the top hitters coming up now. Enriquez hitting 448 for Isla de De La Juventud this year. 12 home runs in league play as well. He's leading the league in hitting. At the time that they stopped the season to get ready for this tournament. The Team Japan bullpen is now getting busy for the first time. Runner in second, one out. Guriel is on deck. That's too low. Two and out of the count. The Team Japan starters, as you see the bullpen, that's Yabuta, the right hander, the left hander with the jacket on, we're not sure. But Yabuta, the, the right hander, is throwing. Two and out of the count to Enriquez. And there is Guriel on deck. Fastball to strike. The Team Japan starters in this tournament, 4 0 with a 1.23 earned run average. That's just the starting pitchers. And in the last three games, until the first inning tonight, they had not allowed any runs. 18 innings, no runs allowed. That ball off the end of the bat. In a little bit is Tamura, and he's got it. Tamura started back on the swing, but Enriquez hit it out toward the end. Two down. Matsuzaka is really pitching well, John, even though he's given up the one run and has a guy at second base. Here's his, f his five strikeouts. There's a beautiful splitter. Another one. And that's just the gas. He just throws that ball right by him, right by him. And this one, last one. I mean, just really good fastballs. He's got good location. I mean, he's got good stuff. And in reading, you know, the scouting reports and I was seeing where, you know, we like I said, we may see him over here in the major leagues in a couple of years. He's tried to get out of his contract a couple of times so he could sign with a team in the, the national in the American League, America, but he hasn't been able to get out of his contract. But they're thinking that he might try to do it again this year at the end of this season. Now it's uh, Fujita, the left hander number 12, has taken off his jacket out there to reveal to us who he is. Yabuta, the right hander, and a wild swing there by Guriel, a ball up around his shoulders, and it is one and one. Well, he was sitting dead red, geared for the fastball, and he got it, but it was up. And you have to remember, Guriel is, is a young guy, and I mean, he wants to perform well, so he's a little anxious up there. The breaking ball, fouling it back out of play. Good swing, though, Johnny. Stayed right on that pitch. One ball and two strikes. With runners on base in this tournament, Matsuzaka has allowed only one hit in 16 at bats. Went for the. Uh, the high hard one to put him away not this time no I think he went for the high hard one to go up and in <laughs> just to set him up the one thing you can he, I, he has he has a purpose with every pitch that he's making I'm just watching him John and he's not just throwing the ball he's he has a purpose in the hands pop fouling back out of play 95 miles an hour that last one but guess what Guriel did not miss that one by much We've got a leadoff double in the inning from Ramirez, but then Perret struck out. Enriquez flied out to left. So I think he realizes Guriel's on his fastball. He's got other weapons. He's going to have to go to them. Breaking ball. Shallow center. And there is Aoki. And that's the inning. A leadoff double, but they never moved him a single base. Four to one, Japan after three. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, Jose Mota, Peter Gammons also with us. We're at Petco Park, San Diego. The championship of the World Baseball Classic. And there's a called strike from the third Cuban pitcher of the game, Norberto Gonzalez, facing 
Aoki Norichika Aoki rookie of the year in the Central League last year had 202 hits as a rookie and he and Ichiro are the only two Japanese hitters ever to have 200 hits in a single season remember they don't play as long a season as they play here in the major leagues in North America and, and that's a ball too high and you know what's interesting John is obviously Ichiro was playing in the States at the time so when Aoki got his 200 hits Ichiro happened to be watching and he signed a bat and he sent it to Aoki and they've been friends ever since but Aoki has been a guy that's you know kind of idolized Ichiro and this is the first time he's ever had a chance to play with him in the classic that is man <laughs> made him look bad. Ichiro may have to counsel him a little bit. Yeah. Do a little, little coaching on that one. But the one thing, if when you talk, let's take a look. It's supposed to be outside. It's a breaking ball inside, and he swings late. I mean, he just, he's completely fooled. He thinks it's, all of a sudden, he sees this inside. He think, now it breaks, and he just takes a swing at it. He was just trying to foul it. So he thought maybe it would break back and over yeah. the plate. I mean, all he wanted to do is foul it. One down, the leadoff man, Kawasaki, comes up now. And that one breaks in there for a strike. Well, you'll see the ball starts way inside, almost behind him. And he just kind of, he's just trying to fight it off, foul it if he can. That's caught at shortstop by Parrett. Two down. Kawasaki is now 0 for 3 in this game. You know, we I've talked about the difference in playing the way they play the game, meaning Japan and Cuba, but their hitting approach is very different as well. This is Guriel on the on the left. Now this is more of a major league swing right there. I mean that's the way he swings. He's trying to drive the ball, and that's what they're trying to do. Each row is trying to put the ball in play, and and the hitters on the Japanese team they're all very similar to each row. They move their feet. Watch. They don't plant. Look at his back foot is well off the ground. I mean they don't plant. They're just trying to put the ball in play. They're trying to hit line drives. And if you drag your back foot, your bat will stay level longer through the hitting zone. Whereas if you stay on your backside and you swing as the most you know players do in Major League Baseball, you can drive the ball more because you're using your lower body. Whereas the Japanese players use their upper body and they hit with their hands. And that's why they do not hit a lot of home runs, say, when they play in the United States. You know they hit a lot of home runs in Japan because the parks are a lot smaller. Remember uh, Godzilla came over here. He's had some great seasons but he hasn't hit 50 home runs like he did in Japan. I mean the guy's a great player because he's a clutch hitter. He does everything right. You know Joe Torre loves him but he is not Godzilla that was you know we thought was coming over from Japan. And Joe Torre was relieved at that when he first got there because he. He said the last thing he wanted was a guy who was just going to be trying to hit home runs yeah. and show how powerful he was. But the first year he hit 16 homers and still drove in over 100 runs, hit 300. Then last year he showed more power, hit 31 homers, but drove in over 120. But John, I have a, a theory on why that happens. And remember, you know, baseball started here. You know, baseball started here. And remember, the C Caribbean and the Cuban players are closer to us. So they've been able to pick up our style more. The Asian players have all developed their own style of playing the game and playing baseball. So their hitting styles are, are a lot different. You know, you talked about Sadahara O last night and how different his was with the high leg kick and all those things. They developed their own style because they were so far from us. But if they'd have been here watching us on TV all the time and, you know, like the Dominicans and the Venezuelans and all the Latin countries, then they would probably play similar because we did invent the game we made the game what it is today but now you see a lot of teams picking up the baseball around the world and a lot of them are doing it their own way and a lot of it has to do with their physiques and so forth and so on but you know I think it's really because the Caribbean is close the Cubans are close they've been able to you know kind of emulate the way the, the Americans play here is Ichiro after the walk to Nishioka Nishioka a base dealer 41 steals last year and this would seem to be a, a time to steal if he can get the jump against Norberto Gonzalez. Well, it's interesting, and I, and I know, you know, for instance, with with Osan, oh, well, they got him picked off. And there's the throw down to second from Barrero in time. The tag by Parrett and Nishioka. 
He is gone. Ichiro will lead off the next inning. Borrero will be coming up for Team Cuba. Now Cuba comes up last of the fourth inning. Here is Ariel Borrero deep into center field. Back is Aoki. And that is a graveyard for home run hitters. That area out there, you hit it out toward right center in this ballpark. And they almost never go out. Well, we talked about the fact that we thought this ballpark favored the pitchers. And we've seen so far that it does. Even though we've seen one home run, there are a couple of balls that have been hit very well that would have been out in some other ballparks, but not here in Petco. Two years ago, the San Francisco Giants helped the Padres open up their beautiful new yard. And uh, they were talking about how big a yard it was. And there was. They said that they, they were hoping that they might make it Barry Bonds proof because Bonds hit more of his home runs in the old ballpark Qualcomm Stadium than any other yard in the uh, the league. And that's fouled away by Cepeda. Frederich Cepeda struck out his first time. Four to one Japan facing Matsuzaka here in the fourth is Cepeda. Anyway Bonds went the first series here did not hit any home runs. And uh, they afterward they, they said well well Barry is it Barry Bonds proof. He says no this is baseball proof. <laughs> He did hit one out to that similar spot. We just saw Borrero hit one. And uh, I think it was uh, Jay Payton was out there at the time for San Diego. He made a leaping catch and brought it back Actually, into the yard. Yeah, we were here. That was the first game that he played here. One and two the count. Oh, right back behind second. Now Kawasaki up. One hop. He got him. The throw grabbed by Ogasawara. Wow. Some spectacular play right there defensively for Team Japan. And the fans here appreciate that type of play. I mean, that ball smashed. It, the catching of the ball was the toughest part of the play. I mean, you say, well, it's a tough throw after he gets up. And it was. Actually got a piece of Matt Suzaka. But he, had, he caught it on the in-between hop. That's the toughest way to catch it. And Matsuzaka exchanging uh, high fives there. And then Urrutia, Osmani Urrutia with a solid single to center. They go back up the middle here all of a sudden against Matsuzaka. Urrutia is aboard, and now Garlobo comes up. Japan, this is the eighth game of the tournament. Team Japan has only committed four errors in the entire tournament. The uh, the Koreans made on well they never did make it. They didn't make any errors. Yeah. You're right. In any of their seven games. Cuba has turned far more double plays than any other team in the tournament. But uh, Cuba's also made more errors than any other team. They've committed 10 errors. But here is Garlobo hitting over 400 in league play this year in Cuba. The fly ball to right field very aggressive. At bats here in this inning, Ichiro's got it. A lot of first ball swinging. An eight pitch inning for Matsuzaka. Ichiro coming up when we come back. It's the World Baseball Classic, the final. Presented by Taco Bell. And there's the look from Parque Central in Havana, Cuba. Yes, this is the, the World Baseball Classic. The team from Havana and Cuba. Taking on the team from the Far East from Japan here tonight in San Diego. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Jose Moto is here. So too is Peter Gammons. Then let's go to Peter. Oh, John, the lasting memory for me in this World Baseball Classic has been all the kids we've seen around here in San Diego from New York and Illinois and California with Japanese and Korean and Cuban flags painted on their faces. I mean, we have seen such passion. Korea, Japan the other night. It was like a college basketball game. The passion in Puerto Rico. And what we've seen is we have seen baseball cultures from around the world. Korean infielders, the Japanese precision, the Dominican passion. But most of all, we understand that it could really only be played in the United States because we are such a diverse culture. What's been great is that this classic has reminded us in America that baseball is America's game because it is so inclusive. Well, and that's a very good point yeah. and very well said. And if you have a chance to check out ESPN.com in the MLB page, check out Peter's column today where he wrote uh, very eloquently about that 
Every concept. There's ball one. The sidearm pitch missing to Ichiro from the left-hander Norberto Gonzalez. John, we've talked about the fact that there are only two major leaguers in the final here. You know, being obviously Ichiro and Otsuka. Those are the only two. But Japanese baseball was hurt a little bit, like the Americans who didn't have all of their best players here. I mean, everyone's talked about the fact that Hideki Matsui wasn't here. But there are a lot of other ones. Kaz Matsui didn't play. Tadahichi Hido Iguchi didn't play. So Taguchi didn't play. Hideo Nomo, who has played in the major leagues, didn't play. Kaz Ishii. I mean, there's a lot of guys who didn't play for Team Japan, just like we didn't have all of our best players playing. So Maybe the, the best yeah. catcher in Japan, uh, yeah. uh, Jojima, who's yeah. now He's with the Seattle Mariners. And that's a foul out of play off to the left. But you know, as was the case, because they're, they're, they've, they've heard a lot of stories of major leaguers who didn't play for Team USA, or right. maybe didn't play for Team Dominican, or whatever, Team Venezuela, who, watching the tournament unfold, that natural competitive spark, you know, that every great player has, you know, they'd watch and say, you know, I could hit this guy, <laughs> you know, I could be turning this around for that team. Plus, they see everybody having such a great time. I mean, it's been so much fun, and there's the hope that the next time around, 2009, when they play the tournament again, that that mindset will be completely different. Everybody will want to play in this team. Well, you know what I, I found interesting was I think the statement by Chipper Jones was this best. He said, I've, I've played in the World Series. That's down the left field line. That is Ichiro style hitting right there into the corner and having to play it as it goes around and hurrying it back in now is Cepeda. That one took an odd hop in that corner, but he does hold Ichiro to a double. And again, you see the difference in the approach at hitting with two strikes. The Japanese team just want to put the ball in play. They'll just slap at it as you see each row here. And we saw that be the key hit in the first inning with two strikes. Just go the other way. He's not trying to pull the ball. But I mean, each row does that better than anybody anyway. But I mean, that's the approach that most of the Japanese players have. With two strikes, they're going to put the ball in play. They're, they don't care where they put hit it. They just do not want to strike out. Make you make a play. They want to force you to make plays. And they've done a good job of that. Well, now he's in scoring position for Matsunaka. Matsunaka lines one in the right field. That's going to be a base hit. One hop to Urutia. Ichiro had to hold up to make sure it wasn't caught. He goes to third. And Matsunaka continues to wear out left-handed pitching. He's now seven for ten against left-handers in the tournament. Two for two against Gonzalez tonight. Well, that was a bad pitch by Gonzalez, a hanging breaking ball. And especially when you know that Matsunaka is trying to pull the ball because Ichiro led off with a double. He wants to see that's a hanging breaking ball right there. And he's trying to pull it. So you play right into his hands. You give him a pitch that he can pull, plus you get it up. You know, they were, he was going to pull the ball so he could move each row over to third, even if you didn't get him in. And the interesting part is that Gonzalez has thrown so well, and but that was a mistake. Well, Team Cuba is going to make a pitching change. The right-handed slugger, Tamura, coming up. Runners at first and third, nobody out. And Yadier Pedroso, a right-hander, is coming in for Team Cuba. And we'll be right back with Japan leading Cuba, 4-1. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, two World Baseball Classic aficionados in short order, along with Peter Gammons and Jose Mota. And now Team Cuba trying to stay alive in this game. Down 4 to 1 already, and Team Japan is set up nicely. Runners at first and third, and there is Pedroso, Yadier Pedroso, a young right hander, Joe. And I guess, uh, I mean, he's very young, and he's got that youthful exuberance. But sometimes it doesn't always know where the ball's going. Well, you see 32 walks in 86 innings, 85 innings. At the knees for a called strike to Tamora. Tamora hit by a pitch knocking in the first run of the game with the bases loaded back in the first inning. Struck out in the third against Gonzalez. And Gonzalez just did a heck of a job, didn't he? A great job. I mean, he probably ran out of gas, but he pitched great. Three and a third innings through 59 pitches. Got out of a tough jam in that first inning. Just a bit outside. One ball, one strike. I'm a little surprised, John, that 
the Cuban team is going to allow them to score this run and just try to stay out of the big inning I guess but you're already down four to one. Well is that a is that a vote of confidence to his hitters from manager Eugenio Velez. As if to say hey we know we're going to score a bunch of runs yet in this game. Well <laughs> if I was him I wouldn't be sure of that. <laughs> I would not be sure that you're going to score a lot of runs against Japan in this ball game. Two and one the count. But I mean it, it's a risk obviously. I mean you say okay if I stay back I get out of the inning maybe with only one run scoring. Back. I mean if it was a tight game. Yeah. I mean you'd see that because right. hey let's just give them the give one. Them the one and move. They're already down by three. Yeah and this is the seventh game of the World Series. There is not one again another game to play. And he's facing a guy who had 31 home runs last year in the Japanese leagues. For the Yokohama Bay Stars, Hitoshi Tamura. But it'll be interesting to see if he's able to get Tamura out and just see how he, if he plays the defense the same way with Satozaki up there. Satozaki, the catcher on deck. Way outside again. That's the second time he's pulled that breaking ball. Yeah. Three and two. So really, I mean, he ideally he'd like to get a strikeout right here. Yeah, that's what he was trying with the two breaking balls, but. He wanted to make sure he got them away, but he held on a little too long. Ichiro, the runner at third, he doubled to lead off the inning. Machinaka, the runner at first, he singled. See the first baseman, Borero, on the bag with Machinaka. That is it. Caught at third. Now he just couldn't get it home. The throw to first, not in time. What a play by Enriquez to get that ball. That looked like a double headed for the left field corner. And he really wanted to go home with it. Well, I think two things happened. He made a great, great play. But the one thing you got to remember is Ichiro is such a smart player. He is running straight up the line. Now watch when he catches the ball back here and he'll look at Ichiro. Let's see where Ichiro is. See, he's right in between him. So he runs in between him and the catcher. That keeps him from throwing to the plate. When he looked up to throw, Ichiro, I mean, that's just a great base running play. It's little things like that that people don't take notice of. But he was going to go home. If Ichiro would have given him a lane to throw home, he would have come home. But he did not give him a lane to throw. And that's for young kids. If you're in the running from third base and the ball's hit behind you, run right up the line, and that will keep the cat him from throwing the ball to the plate. He will not have a line of vision to, to throw it to the catcher. And that's what happened there. He was going home, and each row kept him from throwing home. Now Satozaki lays down a bunt, and it is foul. Pestano out to get it. Trying to move these runners up. Team Japan now leads 5-1. to one. I mean, I did think that Enriquez was going to throw home, but that base running you're talking about, Joe, it showed it. Watch each of you. See, see him run at an angle. You see him, he starts to run inside right there. And now watch where he runs. He's out here, and he'll run in here. And that keeps him. See, watch, watch each row. He sees he's got the ball. Look where he runs. See that next step? Now watch the next one. All his steps are inside. He cannot see the catcher, so there's no place for him to throw. So that was the base running of each row that kept him from being able to come home with the play. They pitch out, hoping to be able to pick somebody off there, but heads up base running over at second base by Matsunaka. He gave them no chance to pick him off. And Matsunaka is not a, a real fast runner, so it's got to be a pretty good bunt with a force out in order at third base. So he'd like to get the jump. Five to one, Team Japan. Well, you know, Ichiro, Joe, I mean, as you so beautifully showed out, we had the great shot of it. Not only kept him from coming home to get him out, but right. that little hesitation, hesitation got yeah. the runner to first base safely. And they'll go for Satozaki at first base. He gets that sacrifice bunt down adeptly. And Machinaka to third. Tamura over to second with only one out. And that's ready now to really open up a big lead over Cuba with one out in the fifth inning. And the left handed hitting Ogasawara coming up. The uh, Cubans have the bullpen going again. Both pitchers. I mean, they're used to the, the the tropical splendor of of the Caribbean, and they've been it's very much commonplace now since they got here to San Diego for their relievers to warm up wearing their jackets. Yeah. I'd like to 
I'm going to send a letter to the Cuban Baseball Federation requesting that they put a number on the jackets. <laughs> All right, so they're conferencing out there, and they're going to go to the bullpen. And uh, the lefty's going to come in to face the lefty, Ogasawara, with runners at second and third. We're in the fifth inning. This will be the fifth Cuban pitcher to come in already. Runners at second and third, one out. It's the final of the World Baseball Classic. Japan with a 5-1 to one lead over Cuba. Top of the fifth here in San Diego. And continuing efforts to provide relief to those victims of the 2005 hurricanes Major League Baseball the San Diego Padres and the Habitat for Humanity teamed up to build three houses during the World Baseball Classic the homes which were built adjacent to Petco Park will be transported to the Gulf Coast region where there is still great need among those victims of Hurricane Katrina Bob Dupay of Major League Baseball and the teams from Japan and Cuba lent a hand yesterday over there. Well that was Ichiro. It may not have been normally seen him without his uniform on but that was Ichiro over there helping. And there were as we say members not only of Team Japan but of Team Cuban. I know one of the players from Team Cuban I think it was uh, Frederick Cepeda made the comment he said you know well, we have many battles with the hurricanes down in Cuba as well. We know what that means and what problems that can cause. And uh, one of the things that they did while they were over there is they all the team members from both ball clubs signed uh, wooden beams and whatnot that will go in those houses just as a, uh, a show of respect for those people hard hit in the Gulf Coast and New Orleans regions. All right. So here is Ogasawara against the left hander. Adiel Palma. On one the count. Michihiro Ogasawa. Oga Sawara. There we go. I left out a syllable, Joe. Sorry. That's all right. I knew who you were talking about. But just call him Guts. That's what I told you. Makes Guts. it easier. That's it. That's his nickname, so you might as well just say that. He won two Pacific League batting championships in Japan in 2002 and 2003, back to back years, in the dirt for a ball. And it is one one. Now, this is a big spot because it's already five to one. Things are bad enough for Team Cuba, but. It's a, Japan gets these two guys home. They will be in very good shape. We're only in the fifth inning. That lead is getting bigger. Five to one. One run is in here in the fifth. On deck you saw Imai, the right-handed hitter. There is Machunaka at third base. Tamura at second base. The infield is in halfway. And you see how they're playing it on the infield. A ball and a strike to count. Left field tagging is Matsunaka. Cepeda kind of caught it flat footed. And the throw in is not in time. Wow. Nice throw right there. Good arm, right. Now he'd been able to catch out maybe with a little forward momentum going. Might have even made a play on him at the play. Two down, but two in. Well, what John is talking about, normally on the outfield, when you have time like this, you back up, you get a running start so that all your momentum is coming forward. So he catches it at a standstill and then just uses the strength of his arm to throw home. You need a little more forward momentum. See, he's got any momentum coming forward on that, would have been a better throw. Holding it second, Tamura, and here is Imai. That run charge to Norberto Gonzalez, who pitched so well, but he allowed the double to Ichiro and the single to Matsunaka to start off this inning, and both of those runs have scored now. Both charged to his record. Six to one, Japan leading Cuba. Japan got four runs in the very first inning. Cuba got one in the last of the first. Uh, looked like a cut fastball and almost hit. Imai. Imai. He really got the big hit of that first inning with two down of the bases loaded and two runs already in. He hit a hard solid single to center field to drive in two more runs to make that a four run inning. That's the starting pitcher for Mari Romero who lasted only one third of an inning. He gave up two infield singles and a walk and they took him out. He got out got the first hitter out. 
And you're right. I mean, they didn't hit a ball out of the infield. I mean, he got a comebacker to start off the game. Well, just uh, one hopper right back to him. Then a couple of ground balls that just got by him and to the infield. Two ground balls to shortstop. And then a, a walk in the middle to Ichiro. And they took him out. So his mistake was letting him hit ground balls past him. Exactly. <laughs> One and two, the, uh, the three and oh, the count, and that one is in there for a strike. Emai, ahead of the count, three balls and a strike. When he got that big bases loaded hit in the first inning against the reliever, Odeline, he was behind on the count, one and two. And he hit one hard, and it was the only hard hit ball of the whole inning. They batted around, nine hitters to the plate, and got four runs. That one is fouled out of the field line, into the crowd. Three and two. Three and two the count to Emai, the eighth place hitter. Aoki would be next. Here's the, the Cuban team down six to one. And they're always rooting on their teammates there, up, clapping their hands. Team Japan also. Everybody up in the top step. Watching intently. Runner in second, that's Tamura. And that high breaking ball fouled into the second deck. Three balls, two strikes, the count. To Imai. These two clubs, as we see the aerial view of Petco Park from high above San Diego. These two clubs met, when I say these two clubs, Japan met Cuba in the 2004 Olympic Games and Japan beat Cuba in an, in an early round and the pitcher who pitched that game was Matsuzaka who is pitching tonight against Cuba and he pitched a dominant game against Cuba two years ago in the Olympics the shortstop and Parrett throws him out to end the inning good work there by Palma but two more runs have scored Team Japan leads Cuba six to one. This telecast of the World Baseball Classic, presented by Taco Bell, is brought to you by Intel, makers of Centrino Duo Mobile Technology. There's the park in the park here at Petco Park, San Diego. The World Baseball Classic. And from high above Petco, from the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear for Terra Tires featuring silent armor technology. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Also Peter Gammons, Jose Mota with us down near the dugouts. Uh, Team Japan and Team Cuban, new pitchers in the game. There's the, uh, the submarine style Shunsuke Watanabe of the Chiba Lote Marines. He was Bobby Valentine's ace. Remember the Bobby Valentine's Chiba Lote Marines won the whole thing in Japan last year. And Watanabe was 15 and 4 with a 2.17 ERA. And he <laughs> throws a little frisbee in there for a called strike two. I think, you know, people think that the underhand, you know, is what gets you. Something like that really gets you. That little slow slur, because there's nothing you can do with it. Oh, and to the count. Now, this is really a different look, isn't it? I mean, his knuckles almost scrape the mound when he throws, and that strikes him out. So long, Ariel Pestano, who strikes out for the second time. Yeah, very few right-handers are going to handle Watanabe. Now, watch where his knuckles are. It almost hits the ground with his hand, and you've got to find the ball looking down at the mound. As I've said before, it's not so much it's just a funky delivery, but the point is, you're used to looking for the ball, like from Matsuzaka up top, and now you got to look like three feet differently just to try to find the ball in a different location. One ball and no strikes to Alexei Ramirez. And the Team Cuba doesn't have many left handed hitters. They get two in the game and one on the bench. That's well, it. Well, you don't. I don't know if you have enough left-handers against a guy like this, but they definitely do not have enough. 
2 0. And it's butted foul by Ramirez. That's a nice idea, though. They need base runners. Well, it's a nice idea, but 2 0, you know a fastball is coming. You better try to hit that one. 2 and 1 the count. But that's not the way they play. No, I mean, I, I think, like you said, it's a nice idea. They're always looking to bunt when nobody's expecting it. Yeah. Although sometimes there's a reason nobody's expecting it, right? <laughs> Two and one the count. Watanabe. Off the fist, and there is Kawasaki. Half that ball was protruding from the end of the glove, but he held on to it. Two men down. Let's go down to Jose Mota. Well, you guys have been talking about different styles, techniques, batting practice. One of the things that Joe and I were discussing earlier is the Cubans do hit curveball during batting practice. But, Joe, what gets you ready for a guy like this? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I agree with you, Jose. You can hit a lot of curveballs from guys over the top, but look at where this ball comes from. Oh. You, can't, wow. you can't work on that. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to practice that type of pitch. Leadoff man Eduardo Perret, who hit a home run in the first inning, he drops a bunt, but it is foul. Yeah, I, didn't, I mean, look, it's, it's like you said, it's not a bad idea. You got to try to get some base runners, but if you drop it down, you better get it fair. You know, one of the, this has been to me just the just the real eye-opening experience to be able to be here with all the teams and watch them play. And the, and the pageantry that has gone on with it, you know, it's kind of like the Olympic Games. I went to the opening of the Olympics once, and this was very similar on a smaller scale, but very similar because it was such international flavor to it. And he makes short work of Perret. And that is all for Cuba. Team Japan get the, some of their best pitchers going tonight. They lead 6-1. to one. Japan six, Cuba one. We go to the top of the sixth inning now at Petco Park in San Diego. And for Japan, as you see Kawasaki out on deck, there's going to be a pinch hitter for Aoki. And yes, it is the 2006, which is also the very first World Baseball Classic. There is Tatsuhiko Kinjo, a right handed hitter, pinch hitting for the left handed batting Aoki. And he bluffed the bunt, took a strike. So Aoki is done. He was 0 for 2 in the game. 6 to 1, Japan. Over the right center field. And Ramirez. John Matsuzaka is gone now, so we're going to take a final look at how he was able to hold the Cuban team down. And mainly because he had a very good splitter that he showed in the first inning. Then he threw change-ups. He had a very good fastball. I mean, when you can throw a fastball by the hitters, that makes your change and everything else more effective. But, I mean, look at that. None of those were in the middle of the plate. I mean, he, he was hitting his spots. He was moving the ball around. This one is Man. fielded, and he got him. Kawasaki thrown out on a spectacular play by Michel Enriquez. Wow. That's two almost perfect bunts or so we thought laid down by Japan on which uh, Cuban defenders were able to make the play. Well uh, Enriquez was cheating a little bit but look at this play. I mean that's unbelievable to be that accurate right down the line. Good pitch. Good call at first base. I mean you may not you, you can see it but he is out by eh, two or three inches. Yeah. <laughs> And but so it's a great play. We're going to have to give props to Bob yeah. Davidson. Right. See, his foot is, I mean, it may not appear right there. His foot is, hasn't hit the bag, and it's like two inches off the, off the uh, bag. Man. Two down, and here is uh, Nishioka. Now, Adiel Palma kind of limps off the mound, back behind the mound, onto the grass. He also started after that ball, and then had to get out of the way of... Uh, Enriquez and Nishioka fouls one out of play. Two and one the count. Now let's watch the pitcher and see what he does here. He starts in, then he stops. He does. He grabs mm -hmm. his left hamstring. Now he's in the dirt with one. Yeah. Now they, they can't really afford anybody to get hurt, not any pitchers, because they've used half the bullpen already. 
I mean, Palm is the fifth pitcher of the game already, and this is the sixth inning. But they've got more out there. Yeah, but he's definitely, you know, having a problem. Palma, who is 35 years old, pitched for Cienfuegos. And that's a foul ball. Which is fortunate for Nishioka because he was not running. Well, it's also fortunate if, if the home plate umpire didn't call it. Because it's his call, and I, I saw the third base umpire put his hands up. Cuba is still in the bullpen. They've got four more right handers left, and uh, still more, three more left handers. They got plenty of guys. <laughs> three and two the count. And that's a foul off the right field side. Still three and two to Nishioka, the speedy second baseman of the Chibalote Marines. Two down, nobody on. And Enriquez, this one very fair. Shows a pretty strong arm right there. So great work being turned in by Palma. Enriquez, Guriel, Borrero, big hitters coming up for Cuba. The World Baseball Classic, the final, presented by Taco Bell. From Petco Park in San Diego, I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Peter Gambit, Jose Mota, also part of our coverage tonight. Team Japan, six runs, seven hits. Team Cuba, one run and four hits. And they got rid of Matsuzaka. He went four innings and shut him down. Much the same way he shut them down effectively in the Olympics two years ago. But now, Shunsuke Watanabe, the submariner, has come in. And he looks like he's going to be real tough. He was extremely tough against Korea last Wednesday in that game. He pitched six innings and gave up no runs and one hit to the Koreans. But Korea eventually won that game anyway. That's a called strike. One ball, one strike. Staying in the game to play center field is uh, Kinjo. Tatsuhiko Kinjo after he pinched it for Aoki. Michel Enriquez, a 400 hitter this year in the Serie Nacional in Cuba. That's a foul out of play as Matsunaka give chase. So you got Enriquez coming up, then Guriel and Borrero. So three of Cuba's top hitters are coming up here. But only Borrero, do up third in the inning, hits left handed. Well, one of the things you were saying, they only had a couple of left handers on the bench. Now, there's probably a few right handed hitters over there going down in the cage, taking some hits left handed, some swings left handed. They had a good pitch to hit. He stayed on that one. One and two. Well, you know, we. We did, as you mentioned earlier, have a chance to talk to Osan, the yeah. manager of Team Japan, before the game. And we asked him about his thought process when he made that pinch hit move in the seventh inning against Korea Saturday night, brought in Fukudome. And he said, well, they had brought Young Hun Kim into the game, kind of a submarine type pitcher. Diving Matsunaka, Watanabe covering. And there's that outstanding defense of Team Japan, Enriquez. Robbed of a hit. Yeah, but Enriquez did a great job of just fighting up there. And finally hit the ball hard, but he's robbed of a base hit. I mean, he really used that at bat very well. See how he stays there? He's, he's waiting and waiting, and fastball gets on him just a little bit, but a good at bat for Enriquez. So Enriquez is 0 for 3, and here is Guriel. Who is 0 for 2 is rounded out and fly to shallow center. One out, nobody on in the sixth inning. Japan leading Cuba six to one. Watanabe back to work. The shortstop Kawasaki with a high hop bobbles it, and Guriel's got too much speed yeah. for that to happen. Once you bobble it with him running, forget it. And he hustles down the line every time. I've watched him play this. In this classic, I mean, he he gets out of the batter's box and really hustles. Well, it's going to be a diff. He looks up. You see him look up to see where Guriel was because he knows he's fast. But Guriel just hustles down the line at all times. But you can watch Kawasaki. See right there, he's looking. He wasn't looking at the ball. He's looking at Guriel to see if he has time. 
And that speed makes forces you to make mistakes. And there's a base hit for Borrero. And that's as soon as we get a left-handed hitter up there, Joe, just what you were talking about. That's a little different. Uh, he whacks one hard, and another lefty, Cepeda's coming up next. But if you're the Cuban manager, tell a couple of you guys go down and just start hitting left-handed here. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's work on it. Well, Osan said that he made that move against the, as you see, Borrero. See, that's a much different, you know, much less difficult pitch to hit if you're left-handed because all you have to do is wait for the ball. You don't move too quickly. And they got excited at Parque Central in Havana with that base hit. We got a camera there tonight. Central Park in Havana. We got more than one camera there too, Joe. Because we're the worldwide leader in sports. That's why. All right, here now is Cepeda. Two men on, one man out. And Osan brought in the left-handed hitter when Byung Hyun Kim came in for Korea in Saturday's game. The left-handed hitting Fukudome then hit a two-run homer. But also he said that Fukudome looked like he was swinging the bat better in batting practice and is work on the side. That's a fair ball down the left field line heading for the corner. Coming around to score is Guriel. Borrero will stop at third as Chamura got the ball back in quickly from left field. So Cepeda just chucking it in along the line. And Cuba opportunistically given a break there on the error by Kawasaki. And they almost instantaneously have turned that into a run. Well, the left-handers, as I said, they have a chance of waiting. They do not start to move too quickly. Once, you, if you're right-handed, you start to move right there as soon as you see the ball. Left-handers can wait, and you see both left-handers watching wait. They're waiting, waiting. See, they're not off balance. In fact, they're fighting the ball off and going the other way, which is obviously a better approach if you have a sinker. Ball pitcher, you go the other way if you're left-handed. Actually, I was a little surprised because I thought Guriel was going to score too. Saw the, you see the excitement that was there in Havana as they watched that play. Well, they've seen this team come from behind before. Although I think it's going to be very difficult to do it against Japan, but, you know, obviously this is the key at bat right here. Well, a base hit right. for Osmani Urrutia could make this a 6-4 to four game. He could also get one RBI with even a ground ball. The infield is backed up, normal depth. Waits for it. Base hit. Morero will score. Cepeda started back to second when he, he was afraid somebody might catch it, so he gets on to third base. But Urrutia has made it a 6-3 to three game. And suddenly, it's as if they figured out something about this tough submariner, Watanabe. Well, the left-handers were waiting, and he gets a hanging breaking ball here, and he's waiting, and he's going back through the middle, so he gets a base hit. But a good job of hitting by Uritia. It's a lot easier if you're left-handed. And remember, Urutia has won five consecutive batting championships in the Cuban League. He's hit over 400 in four of those years. He was hitting 447 when they stopped the season this year to get ready for the tournament. Here is Gard Lobo. And that is a ground ball. They might get two. There's one. Kawasaki to first. Two. A double play. Started by Nishioka. But two runs for Cuba. It is six to three. Ichiro coming up. Now we head into the late innings in the final of the World Baseball Classic. And uh, will this one turn into a classic? We've seen like almost every game we've seen for the last week to 10 days has been a classic. Great games, hard fought, tense, tight games. This one looked like it was going to be a blowout, but all of a sudden, Team Cuba found some life after an error by Team Japan. Now Ichiro leads off against Adiel Palma, and he almost got a hit by that one. Well, I, I was going to say both teams got a break there, John. First, the Cuban team got a break on the air, and the J Japanese team got a break on that last ball that was hit. It hit sharply because all of a sudden they started going the other way against Watanabe, and they were successful. Yoandre Garlobo 
almost had himself a base hit to right field instead yeah. of an inning ending double play. Yeah, and one more run would have really made a difference, though. If it was six to four, it makes a big difference. I know it's only one more run, but six to four is if you're the team that's trailing is so much closer in your mindset than six to three. Ichiro. There's Burial. And Ichiro retired. He's one for three in the game with a walk. Each time he's been on base in this game, he has scored a run. Now let's go down near the Cuban dugout. Here's our colleague, Jose Mota. Well, checking in on the conditioner pitcher, Palma, very emotional guy in between innings. Dr. Antonio Castro checked with him, consulted. He said, I am fine. Asked one of his teammates what he's complaining about. Obviously, he saw him holding one of his hamstrings. And the teammates said, remember, you are a warrior. All right. Well, I think they're a group of warriors. These guys have traveled all over the world and won tournaments. And you know they weren't going to go quietly. I mean, and I, it's just a testament to how tough they are. Just the fact that they've been able to beat, you know, the Dominican team when they had to, and just, you know, to bounce back in this ball game. Matsunaka, the cleanup hitter, has had three singles in this game. He had 46 home runs last year in the Japanese leagues, and no home runs in this tournament. But he has a 4.48 average in the tournament. He's turned into Ichiro in this tournament. <laughs> You know, it's funny is we we know a lot about the Japanese teams, you know, because we, we, we even watch them on TV sometimes and we get chances to see them. The Cuban team is still kind of a mystery to yeah. us. It really is. As close as they are. As they are, right. Strike three. Matsunaka retired for the first time and finally retired by a left-handed pitcher. He was seven for ten against lefties in this tournament. Two for two tonight until Palma struck him out. And it's very important, you know, for Palmer to, you know, get them out one, two, three, so his team can get right back after Watanabe. Because if if he has an inning where he struggles, the momentum that they generated last inning would be gone. When we were talking about the Cuban team in a moment ago, we saw the shot of O Kontoku, manager O Osan as Tamura. There is O Kontoku. I'm, I'm picking up those little Japanese phrases now, Joe. <laughs> Manager O. Kontoku. You know, they call him Mr. O out of respect. Osa. In, in, yeah. in Japan. I mean, I looked at Warren Cromartie, who played for him years ago, even named, you know, he says he's the godfather of his, one of his children. That's oh. how close they became when he played over there. Warren Cromartie used to play for the Montreal Expos, of course, the Marlins, et cetera. Fine left-handed hitter. And he played... Five years, I think, for Sadahara O. Yeah. And he named, you know, he's the godfather of one of his children. He had a son, Cody, who's now 20, and Sadaharu O is the godfather of of Cody Cromarty. One and two the count. And it's high for a ball. Of course, O was sort of an outsider, even though he was born and raised in Japan. His mother was Japanese, but his father was born in Taiwan. Taiwan, right? And uh, O was considered a foreigner, which is uh, just the way it was in those days. But when I went to Japan about 17 years ago, I had a chance to meet O and Nakajima, and and it was just so much difference between the two because Slider. Nakajima was from Japan. Slider in the dirt. Nakajima, when they were both starring for the Tokyo Giant, was the more popular player yeah. most of that time. Six to three, Cuba is coming up. This telecast of the World Baseball Classic is presented by the Taco Bell Chicken Caesar Grilled Stuffed Burrito, the burrito for chicken Caesar salad lovers, and in part by AOL. Want a better high-speed internet? You belong at AOL. The World Baseball Classic, John Miller, Joe Morgan, along with Peter Gammons and uh, Jose Mota from San Diego. And uh, Shunsuke Watanabe, back for his third inning of work. Ariel Pestano, he was the first man to face Watanabe when the Submariner came out of the fifth inning and Pestano struck out against him. He'll try it again now. From shortstop, Kawasaki, he dropped it another one. This time not with a fast runner going. And once again, Kawasaki has allowed Cuba a little foot in the door. Well, the last time he looked up at Goriel to see if he had time to throw him out. He knows he has time here because Pistano doesn't run that well. 
You can see Kawasaki stop no, right here. I mean, here's Kawasaki right there. I don't know. He just messed up in the transfer. I don't know what caused that. It definitely wasn't the speed of Castano. Castano is still 40 feet from first yeah. base when the ball was in the glove. Yeah, the train just could not make the transfer from glove to throwing hand. Well, after Kawasaki's error in the sixth inning, the next three hitters all had base hits. That's a strike to Alexei Ramirez. Ramirez, the center fielder from uh, Pinar del Rio. Ramirez has a double off the left center field wall, and he has popped up to short. He was hitting 323 for Pinar del Rio this year in the Serie Nacional. Under at first, nobody out. Cuba trying to cut away still more into that Team Japan lead. Double play ball to short. Kawasaki recovers. Ishioka the first to double play. I'll tell you what, they're hitting the ball hard, but they're hitting it right at Japan when they get a runner on. I mean, the last two balls with runners on have been scorched. But then again, that's what a single ball pitcher does for you. He keeps the ball on the ground. This ball's hit hard to Hopper, and even though he bobbled it, he did the right thing. He got in front of it, knocked it down, and he still had plenty of time. So he still has plenty of time. Just get in front of it, knock it down, pick it up, and you can still turn two. Nishioka with the pivot, and uh, Kawasaki can celebrate. He kind of handled that one like a third baseman. Yeah, well. Two down here is Eduardo Perret. Over Matsunaka. Watanabe drops the ball. Man. Wow. You know, for What's a team that, is, is that, that practices fundamentals so much, I mean, they're taking their eyes off the ball. I mean, you watch this is clearly what happens to Watanabe. I mean, he takes his eyes off the ball because he wants to find the bag. But all he had to do is catch the ball, then find the bag. But, I mean, you'll see clearly that he looks away from the ball when he's trying to find the bag. I mean, this is just a routine play. But watch his head. Now the ball's coming. Look at that. He's looking at to find the bag, and he just looks away too quickly. And he's not even looking at the ball, as you can see. Hmm. That was uh, Ogasawara, the first base. I think I called him. Machunaka, but Ogasawara is the first baseman. Uh, Machunaka is the designated hitter. Watanabe with the error. That's the second error of the inning. The third error in the last two innings committed by Team Japan. Here is Michel en Enriquez from Isla de, de la Juventud. A high, lazy fly to right center Ichiro. So despite all the defensive problems, Watanabe handles it easily. On to the eighth inning, six to three, Japan. Here we go now, into the eighth inning of the World Baseball Classic. Japan six, Cuba three. Now the El Palma, high and tight for ball one to Satozaki, the Team Japan catcher. Satozaki has struck out, walked, and uh, had a sacrifice bunt, so he is 0 for one. Officially. Fastball inside from Palma. Four runs in the first inning for Team Japan in this game. And really, a lot of them were just gifts. Some walks, a couple of infield hits, a hit batsman, a bases loaded walk, and then finally a two run single by Emai and made it a four run rally. They got two more runs in the fifth inning. Cuba got a run on the first and two runs in the sixth inning. Two and one the count. And the breaking ball, a strike to to enjoy. The starting pitcher was Matsuzaka. He went four innings, one run, four hits. And that really, that probably is his worst start. The starter for Cuba, or Mari Romero, and he, he looks glum. He lasted only one third of an inning. Two infield hits and a walk, and he was taken out. And the play made by Eduardo Perret. Satozaki retired, one away. Kawasaki with two errors at shortstop for Japan. One on the sixth and one on the seventh. And at the end of the inning, he went into the dugout and was greeted by 
His teammate Nishioka, the second baseman. Well, I guess he's telling himself to wake up, or maybe he's telling him to keep his eyes on the ball. Either way, it works. <laughs> You know, John, we were talking earlier about the fact that, you know, about the Cuban team. And, you know, in the past, people have always said they win international tournaments because they're playing against our minor leaguers. They're playing against, you know, amateurs. Well, they have proven whether they win this tournament or not that they can play with anyone. I mean, to beat the Dominican team in a crucial game as they did on Saturday proved the point. That they can play with anyone. They may not be have a lot of major leaguers on the team, but they have some major league talent. And they have some players on their team that a lot of major league teams would love to have. And and the and so it's been very I, I it's been very eye-opening to me because I've always thought of it that way. You know, they're playing the international, you know, rules, international teams, they could win. But they played major league baseball caliber players and they played that type of game. And they have proven to the world that. Cuba has a lot of talent over there and they know how to use it and they know how to play the game. Well, he's ball is grounded a second by Ogasawara and Guriel throws it out. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's an out. The ball was dropped yeah. by as he's taken Borero out. as he made the exchange from glove to hand. All right, but uh, that's a good point and we saw it here tonight. Right. Watanabe came in. They have almost an entirely right-handed lineup. And then we saw guys making some adjustments right. uh, as, as time went on. Definitely made some adjustments. They hit the ball sharply a couple of times. They ended up hitting into double plays, but they did what they the best they could do. They made the adjustment, and I, I'm, I'm impressed with them. Plus, I just, in watching them over the course of, of the classic, I mean, they have a camaraderie. There's a, there's a passion for the game. There's a pride in, in them being together as a group. It just you know and, and I'm not saying that the other teams didn't have that because I think that's one thing that this classic has done is it brought even you know countries together different parts or whatever and these guys have played together and I mean just just love being together and I think that's been really what the success of this classic should be remembered for is how it's brought all these people together playing baseball and, and baseball is definitely an international game now and used to belong to us here in America but it's an international game. And there's a lot of good baseball being played all over the place, as we find yeah. out. Emai strikes out against Palma. Adiel Palma has pitched real well. Big hitters coming up, starting with Guriel. We're in downtown San Diego, beautiful Petco Park, home of the Padres and the World Baseball Classic Final. These views courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships. And first ball swinging against Watanabe. Guriel grounds one foul. Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear for Terra Tires featuring silent armor technology. 42,696 the paid crowd for the championship here between Team Japan and Team Cuba. No USA, no Dominican Republic, no Venezuela. Only two major leaguers, in fact, even in the game. Not in time. Guriel legs it out, and Bob Davidson wanted to ring him up. He started to clench the fist to call him out, and then said, oh, wait a minute. He's, you're a foot past the bag. I guess you're safe. Well, they're going to make it look like they're going to make a pitching change. Osan has come out of the dugout to the home plate umpire. He had Otsuka. A right-hander and the a left hander also up in the bullpen. He got a couple of lefties coming up. So we may see the lefty Fujita. There is Ariel Borrero coming up for Team Cuba. Japan leading six to three, a runner at first. And nobody out here in the last half of the eighth inning. On deck for Cuban is Frederic Cepeda. Six to three the score. Sports Center right after the ball game. Neil Everett and Scott Van Pelt will bring you the April Major League Baseball surprises. How about this one. Team USA not in the final of the WBC. Paul Tagliabue the NFL commissioner retires. The Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. First ball swinging. Borrero fouls one off his foot facing uh, Fujita. Soichi Fujita, he was Bobby Valentine's uh, 
left handed specialist out of the bullpen for the champion Chiba Lotte Marines last year. 45 games, 38 and two thirds innings pitched. Cuba has only the two lefties in the lineup, and they're hitting consecutively here. Borrero and Cepeda. They each had big hits in the sixth inning round where they got two runs. And off the end of the bat over toward the Team Japan dugout toward Sadaharu O. Well, he, he doesn't look comfortable right now. Borrero doesn't. And that's what Osan was counting on. Yeah, he definitely doesn't look comfortable. Otsuka, who's been the closer for Team Japan, warming up in the bullpen, meanwhile. That's Guriel at first base. He hustled out an infield to hit. That's high and inside. One ball and two strikes. You got Borrero, is actually the cleanup hitter. Borrero with Cepeda on deck. Borrero. Hitting 344 this year for Via Clara. Nine homers, 55 batted in. <clears throat> Just off the outside with that fastball. Yeah, I've been watching Ulyaski uh, Goriel for three or four days, John. I was trying to figure out who he reminds me of because he looks like, you know, a great young player. And I, I figured it out. It reminds me of Juan Samuel, who was a second baseman with the Phillies. And I tell you what, he looks just like him. In every way. I mean, he runs like him. I mean, they both very, very, very fast. Very strong. And Juan Samuel could hit the ball out of the ballpark. He could steal a base for you. I mean, he was very good. I always thought he was going to be the best second baseman I'd ever seen, but it didn't turn out that way. But he still had a great major league career. Now, how about this? Number one, Cuba playing here in San Diego in the USA, the home team. And now the crowd, many of them chanting, Cuba. And that's a foul out of play off the left field line. Well, I think Cuba is closer to San Diego than Tokyo. <laughs> there they start the cheer again. We imagine that could be being echoed down in uh, Parque Central in Havana. Where they have been watching the big screen. Three and two the count. Goriel, the runner at first. High in the air, shallow left, hurrying in Tamura. And there is one away. Goriel holding at first base. Let's take a look at the pitching summary brought to you by Taco Bell. Shunsuke. Watanabe out of the ball game now. He went three plus innings, charged with two runs, one earned run. The team committed three errors while he was in there. One in the sixth inning and two more in the seventh inning. He threw 29 pitches, Joe. 25 of his 29 pitches were strikes. Here is Cepeda. Cepeda, a switch hitter. That is foul. And third baseman hugging the line over there is Imai. And John, this is what I was talking about when we said it didn't seem like a big difference from six to three to six to four, but it did make a big difference, like I said, psychologically, because the, every guy walking up now would be the tying run, whereas now you have to get another guy on base to get into that situation. And that changes the mindset of the pitcher as well as it does the hitter. Urrutia would be next. So paid a broken bat foul. One, two. Cepeda, one for three, had an RBI double in the sixth inning. Cepeda is hitting 360 in this tournament. Six runs batted in. Sports Center right after the ball game. For those tuning in, for Sports Center. But we've got a ball game still going here in the World Baseball Classic. And then we'll feed you right into Sports Center. So hang on with us as we see if Team Cuba. One of the surprise entrants here in the final of the World Baseball Classic. Remember this past week they had to get by the Dominican Republic here in the semifinals on Saturday. And before that they had to get by Puerto Rico in San Juan. And before that Team Venezuela. Way outside. And all of those teams were filled with Major League players. Yeah. And some not just Major League players, Major League stars. I mean, a lot of people thought that the Dominican was the team to beat. Right. And those who didn't thought it was Team Venezuela as the team to beat. 
That ball is hit high and deep to left field. Way, way back there. Gone. A home run. And now it is a one-run game. Spectacular home run for Frederic Cepeda. They have come back from a six to one deficit, which it was going to the last of the sixth inning, and it's six to five now. Well, trying to that double play in the sixth inning, John, as I said at the time, was very important. They could have scored one more run had they not turned the double play. And we see how excited they are in Havana. That was the response to the home run at Parque Central in Havana. Sports Center after the game, but for now, the game is getting good. Otsuka, the former Padre, comes in. Well, they were playing the Trevor Hoffman Hell's Bells for the entrance of Hoffman's old setup man, Aki Otsuka. Back to Otsuka off the bat of Urutia, and he has gone on one pitch. And Otsuka has just been sensational in this tournament. He's been at four games. He's finished four games and has not yet allowed a hit in the tournament. Last year he was pitching great until the last maybe couple of months or six weeks of the season and he faded considerably and the Padres traded him in the offseason part of the uh, the other sent Adam Eaton over to uh, Texas so Otsuka will be with the Rangers this year but he had uh, an outstanding year here two years ago and almost an, an entire outstanding year last year. And there's that tight slider to guard Lobo. Six to five. Can you believe this, Joe? Yeah, I mean, well, I can believe it because, you know, the Cubans really made some adjustments to what Japan's pitchers were doing, and they started hitting the ball sharply. Frederic Cepeda with his second home run of the tournament. He has driven in three of these runs late in the game to fuel this comeback from a six to one deficit. Now to six to five. And Cepeda, you know, he really been one of the top hitters in this tournament. We're looking at uh, Yoandri Garlobo right now. With two down and nobody on. Six to five, Japan. Ichiro. Now to the ninth inning. And certainly Japan could use some more runs. Kinjo Kawasaki Nishioka coming up. Japan six, Cuba five. We go to the ninth inning at Petco Park. Just a couple of innings ago, it was six to one Japan, but Cuba two in the sixth, two more in the eighth to make it a one run game. And you also have to give the Cuban relief pitchers credit, John, like you say, for shutting them down. And uh, you know for this long and giving themselves a chance to get back in the ball game. Well, especially as you see Frederic Cepeda after his two-run homer made it a one-run game. The guy who's still in there right now, the lefty, uh, the El Palma, he came on with one out in the fifth inning and has gone three and two-thirds innings and has retired every batter he has faced. There he is, and at one point it looked like he had injured his hamstring. And so say Mota told us when he came back to the dugout afterward one of his teammates went up to him and said uh, that hamstring forget it you're a warrior <laughs> and he has proven his teammate to be right. So Cuba this resilient Cuban team is still breathing in this one six to five Frederic Cepeda and he's had to quite a tournament as well and has really come up big in the clutch tonight twice and Joe you mentioned it the, the double play guard Lobo hit a double play to end the six inning, but he hit the ball very hard against Watanabe strike one to Kinjo leading off the ninth but it had 
they not turn a double play or had the ball gone through just anything just to get the run home from third yeah. that one run that they did not get they had a runner at third and actually first and third and one out in the sixth yeah. inning and they got that run home this game could well be tied right well the point is anytime you know two run lead is never safe you know three run lead is kind of safe because you have to get a couple of guys on to bring the tying run to the plate Charging from third, making the play in the dirt and not pulled out by Borrero. Enriquez on the run, threw it in the dirt, and Kinjo is safe at first. The first Cuban error of the game. That's interesting because Borrero has been picking everything over there, and that one he wasn't able to come up with. And, it, and this one didn't look like it was that tough a play because I've seen him make some tough plays during this classic. Now, watch the ball is there. I mean, that's just a little short hop. That wasn't as bad, you know, a play as we thought he's on the run, so he throws it low. Well, it's a little tougher than I thought, maybe, but I've seen Barrero come up with these. So that's kind of a short hop. It hits off the end of his glove. So the first error by Team Cuba. Kinjo is aboard, and here is the leadoff man, Kawasaki. Barrero. And I think he was trying to see if he's going to bunt. I would bet that he's going to bunt, but he didn't give it away when he threw the first base. Kawasaki 0 for 4 in the game. And again, they throw over there. Kinjo is back. Kinjo had only one steal for the Yokohama Bay Stars last year. And Osan, I mean, he'd, he'd like to get another run here to be a little more comfortable. There's the bunt. The play goes to second base in time. Enriquez, who just made the error, atoning for that somewhat with a quick relay over to second to Parrett covering for the force out on Kinjo. Well, he's played great at third the entire ball game, so obviously this doesn't surprise me. Charges in, sets himself, and fires to second base in plenty of time. Now, you mentioned so many times, Joe, usually in a spot like that, you want the first baseman well, to field the bunt. He wasn't giving himself up. He was trying to deaden the ball and beat it out for a base hit. You know, you can't have both worlds this late in the game. Early in the game, I, I like that. But this is late in the game. You're trying to get one more insurance run. Here's Nishioka. Oh, oh that's, that's going to be a hit. Yeah. Wow. Guriel, remember Guriel, not only is a young player, 21 years old, but he's been primarily a third baseman in league play in Cuba. They converted him to a second, so they get both his bat and Enrique's bat in there. You know what? I'm, I'm watching this. The only guy that had a chance on this play is the pitcher. Now, see, Guriel is way back here. He can't come and get that ball either way. I mean, he broke toward first when he saw him square around, but he can't get the ball anyway. That play has to be made by the pitcher, and I don't think he could make it. It's just an excellent bunt. I mean, Nishioki just made a, a perfect play because you have to remember a left handed pitcher throws and he kind of falls off to the third base side and he pushed it to the right side. We got a right hander and a left hander, but we don't know which right hander, which left hander, because they got the warm up jackets on out there. But doesn't matter anyway at this point. Ejino Velez has decided to stay with his uh, lefty, Palma, with. Well, I mean, Ichiro coming up now. And with Ichiro coming up, I don't know if it makes any difference. So, I mean, Palmer's throwing the ball well, so he's going to say, hey, let's go get him. Ichiro has walked and scored a run. Robbed of a hit by the shortstop. Parrett made a leaping catch on the liner. He has doubled and scored a run, and he has grinded out to second. One for three officially. Been on twice, scored twice. Well, he fired him up inside last time. In the dirt. Palma got Ichiro to ground out to second. The only pitcher tonight for Cuba that against whom Ichiro had really hit the ball hard. Yeah. Well, he pitched him well in that he's leaving a little too much room over here, I think, but they've got to stay close enough to hold the runner at second. What he did last time, he forced Ichiro to pull the ball. And I think that's the best way to pitch him. Make the ball run in, keep it running in. If you get the ball out over the plate, even with two strikes, he will go the other way.
That's in the right field, a base hit. Charging hard, Urrutia. Coming home is Kawasaki. Safe! Oh, no, yeah, he's safe. I thought he was blocked off the plate. Well, he hit it with his hand. Pestano is arguing, but the plate up by Hallian agrees with you, Joe, that he got it with his hand, and the other runners advance the base, and Ichiro comes through in the clutch. It is seven to five. And that there's enough for that theory I had of making him pull the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's why he's had 200 hits for five straight years. There's probably not any way you can pitch him consistently and get him out, but last time up, they forced him to pull the ball and got him out, and they try to force him again. See, that ball's running in, and he just pulls it in the hole. He's got such great hands that he can react and just pull it in. Now watch, he does block him off the plate, but look at his hand. Well, oh. maybe he didn't get it in. He, he got his hand onto that foot. <laughs> See, I thought... Oh, yeah, there he it did is. get it in. He got it in. I thought he did, I, I, but I, from my view up here before, I thought he got it in. But you Wait, can see we'll why Pistano is so upset. Yeah, watch. He, gets, he sticks his right hand in, not his left hand. That's what's weird. See right there? There's his left hand, right hand. And there's ball one to Matsunaka. So Ichiro, Joe, the more I start thinking about Ichiro, the more I'm watching what's happened in these last two games, I'm thinking Ichiro may be a good choice for the MVP of this tournament. I'd already started to spell his name before he got that base hit. So if they're able to win, I mean, he's definitely the guy for me. But now they're going to walk Matsunaka, who's been so tough against lefties anyway. They've got a right-hander up in their bullpen. And uh, Tamura, a right-handed hitter, do up next. Osan came out of the dugout to say something to Tamura. Probably will get the pitching change after this walk is completed. Seven to five, Japan. And this whole thing started on an error by the third baseman, Enriquez. And Nishioka got a beautifully placed drag bunt single. And Ichiro coming through in the clutch. So the bases are loaded now. And here's the Cuban bullpen, Yurieski Maya. A right hander has been up out there. He's got the jacket off. Well, um, the, ang the angle at the plate that we're going to see, you can see he puts his right hand in. You may not be able to see him touch the plate right in there, but watch his right hand. See, there's his right hand right at the corner of the base. Looks like he touched the yeah, plate right there. Yeah, and the umpire is the only one that knows for sure. I mean, his angle, see, we can look at it. It looks like he gets his right hand in. Now watch his right hand, not his left. His right hand right there. It appears that he grabs the side of the plate as he is blocked off. And a great block there by Pistano. See, Pistano is blocking him. There it is right there. You can see his, his right there. I mean, great slide. But, you know, you can, you can certainly see why Pistano just knows in his heart of hearts that he never touched right. the plate at exactly. all. He did a great job, but... So we finally get, I don't know what, why this took so long for Team Cuba to make this pitching chain. Because Maya was just standing there ready to go, but he's. The World Baseball Classic, there's some fans of Team Cuba. But Japan has lengthened its lead down to 7 to 5. And Japan has the bases loaded with one out. A new pitcher is on for Cuba. And uh, a new hitter will come up for Japan. This is the World Baseball Classic, and for the first time, the game's greatest players playing for pride and the championship. For a complete tournament recap, log on to worldbaseballclassic.com. Worldbaseballclassic.com. And there's a classic. Ichiro. And these two games here, Joe, the semifinal, where he hit a base hit and promptly stole a bag, then the second time hit a base hit, promptly stole a bag, as if to try and inject energy and life into his club and who had not been able to beat Korea and now he's doing it again here tonight he's been on base three times and scored two runs now driven in a huge run here in the ninth inning well you have to give Sadahara O a lot of credit because he moved into the third slot and they started scoring runs from that moment they weren't scoring a lot of runs before they moved into the third slot and he has each time he's been able to hit with a runner in scoring position he's been able to pick him up also a pinch hitter 
with the right hander Maya coming into the game. Osan will counter with uh, Fukudome. Fukudome, who hit the big home run as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning here Saturday night, they broke a 0 0 tie. Kosuke Fukudome of the Chunichi Dragons hit 328 last year, 28 homers, 103 runs batted in. Bases loaded, one out. Pop foul back toward us. And out of play. One strike to count to Fukudome. Base runners, Nishioka, who had a drag bunt single, third base. Ichiro, who got the RBI single to right, second base. Matsunaka, who was walked intentionally at first base. Infield double play depth for Cuba. Seven runs, nine hits for Japan. Five runs, nine hits for Cuba. Japan has made three errors in the game. Cuba with a huge error in this inning. Curveball. And that will go foul out of play off to the left. 0 oh 2. So that play at the plate and Pistano really. Apparently had, he all but had Kawasaki knocked off the plate except for his index finger. <laughs> Though we had some great shots of it and those shots proved it was just a great call by Tom Halley in the home plate umpire. 0 oh 2 the count. That's a base hit to left field with a huge error in this inning. Curveball. And that will go foul out of play off to the left. 0 oh 2. So that play at the plate and Pistano really. Apparently had, he all but had Kawasaki knocked off the plate except for his index finger. <laughs> Though we had some great shots of it and. Those shots proved it was just a great call by Tom Halley in the home plate umpire. Going to the count. That's a base hit to left field. Ichiro is also being sent home. Nishioka has scored. Ichiro does score. And for the second straight game, Fukudome inserted by his manager O Kontoku and comes through with a big hit he's driven in four runs coming off the bench in the last two games and now they have opened it back up it is nine to five Japan uh, again we see the discipline of the Japanese hitters with two strikes they will go the other way I mean you're talking about a slugger and he just takes the ball the other way and there was no way they were going to stop Ichiro from scoring. I mean, he never even looked at the third base coach. He came around third flying and was going to score, and he does score. Well, if the left fielder, Cepeda, had thrown that one right to the plate, as you see Osan leading the cheering from the dugout, well, Ichiro may have wished he hadn't have, but the throw was a little bit offline, and he came right around Pistano. I mean, you're looking, and now they're trying. He, Satozaki tried to bunt. I mean, they're just trying to do everything they can to win this ball game, and they don't feel like they may not have enough runs. They're just going to try to get some more. Satozaki 0 for 2 with a, a walk and a sacrifice bunt. So 9 to 5, Japan with three runs on the board here in the ninth inning, and it all started on the error, the ground ball by Kinjo, and Enrique as the third baseman. Threw it low in the dirt to first base, and Borrero could not handle it. Threw a fastball by him, did Maya. 92 miles an hour. One ball and two strikes. Satozaki is the seventh hitter to come to bat here in the ninth inning for Japan. On the slider in the dirt. Two and two, the countdown. Ogasawara is on deck. Nine to five. This uh, happened more or less to Cuba the last time, where they had defeated Team Venezuela using their great twosome of Martí and Lasso to get the nine innings in, just as they did this Saturday against the Dominican Republic. But the next game, after they beat Venezuela, the Dominican knocked them around. They won that game seven to three. We're ahead seven nothing after six. There's uh, Pedro Luis Lasso, who pitched so well. 
four and two third innings in relief of Marti on Saturday afternoon here. He pitched the last five innings against Venezuela the Sunday before. Three and two the count. Pop foul and out of play. There is a school of thought though, Joe, that for Cuba, number one, just getting to the final was its own victory. I'm sure they're not looking at it that way at the moment, but but that's the way he managed that game on Saturday against the Dominican. Well, Get I to the final and then worry about the final. Well, later. I think you had to. Yeah, I mean, that's the way you have to play in a short tournament like this. Is you know manage the game you're playing that particular day. You worry about the next game the next day. Three and two the count to Satozaki, and he keeps battling Maya, fouling another one out of play. And John, I'm not so sure. You know that that the pitching has been you know the downfall here. I mean the first inning was just a disaster. Things happened and it wasn't all in the making of the pitcher. A couple of little weak ground balls. You know they didn't get a ball out of the infield and scored runs. In, you know the first two runs. So it was just one of those days where they're going to fall behind early and they have battled back. And it's just it's unfortunate for them that. Everything is falling apart here in the ninth inning and you can only fight back so long you know they came back from the six to one deficit to make it six to five. I mean to think that even if they can get out of this jam here and to come up with four runs in the ninth inning. I mean you're asking a lot. You know. From a team just to be able to bounce back that many times. And it's tough. To keep a team down that has each row it seems. Right. Japan with nine runs on the board. They have not hit a home run in this game. That's a foul. Glancing off the bat. Three balls, two strikes. Well, with, with the approach they take to hitting, John, and especially in ballparks like this, they're just not going to hit a lot of, you know, balls out of the ballpark. Satozaki hanging tough. He's hitting 409 in the tournament. And he works his way aboard with a walk. And uh, Maya is not happy with that call. Looked very frustrated, folding his arms across his chest. After that was called ball four. And we're going to get a mound visit here with the left handed batting, Ogasawara, coming up. Remember, Team Japan put four on the board in the very first inning. They say Elo Sagi, the pitching coach, out to make the change. Bases loaded, one out. Nine to five, Japan. We'll be back. Japan nine, Cuba five. Team Japan with a three run ninth inning going on here. The bases loaded and only one out. As we take a look at the uh, the Cuba dugout, Cuba, which uh, a week ago Sunday on defeated Team Venezuela, one of the favorites in this tournament, a six inning home run there by Cepeda was a big one. Then they defeated Puerto Rico. Odeline getting the final strike on Wednesday in San Juan, and then finally Lasso striking out Soriano to beat the Dominican Republic here to get to the final. Meanwhile. A subdued crowd at Parque Central, Central Park in Havana, watching the game on the big screen. And uh, as they watch their new left hander warm up in the bullpen, hope is starting perhaps to wane. They well, made that dramatic comeback to get to within one, but then Japan came roaring back here in the ninth. Well, it's been a roller coaster ride there. They were down, then they were up, and now they're back down again in Havana. But again, you still have to be very proud of your team if you are in Cuba. Because they have definitely showed the world that they have the toughness and the knowledge of how to play this game to compete on any level. So here is Ogasawara. As the Cuban team knowing that the odds are now more heavily stacked against them than, the, than at any other time in this tournament. Michihiro Ogasawara. He has drawn a base loaded walk and also hit a sacrifice fly. He's knocked in two runs 
Man, that's a high foul out of play. That's the first time I've seen him try to knock in four right there. He was going for that one. Well, how many times do you get a chance to knock in four in the World Baseball Classic? Well, he definitely let that one go. <laughs> Watch this swing. This is not a, the normal typical swing. Back leg, he's trying to just turn on it. Yulieski Gonzalez of Havana Province in the Cuban Leagues. Cuban Leagues, they have 16 teams. And they play in four different divisions, four teams in each division. There are two teams in Havana. But most of the, uh, the league, each team represents uh, a certain province, a certain part of the country. One strike to count to Oga Sawara. There were the runners. Matsunaka at third base. Fukudome, who had the big pinch hit, two-run single at second. Satozaki, who walked at first. Infield looking for the double play that would end the inning. Yulieski Gonzalez. And he steps off the slab. And the fans are a little unhappy with him now. Gonzalez is 25 years old. Low on outside. One ball, one strike. One of the Team Japan, which was overshadowed throughout this tournament by Korea. And then had things go against them in that, especially an umpire's call in the game with Team USA a week ago Sunday. But now they need three outs more and they will have won the whole thing. One and one the count. In the fairly shallow right field, Urutia tagging up and heading in Matsunaka, and it is not in time. It is 10 to 5. Castano couldn't hold the throw anyway, but he was going to score. And the runner from second also moved up, Fukudome over to third base. Satozaki holding it first, and Ogasawara, who does not have a hit in this game, gets his third RBI of the game. So now Emi, the third baseman, will come up, and we're going to get an, uh, perhaps another pitching change. We've got a right-hander up in the bullpen. Elo Segui, the pitching coach, dispatched out there by manager Eugenio Velez. And you can hear some of the fans, they just want to see this one wrap up now and have the closing ceremonies. But yet another pitching change for Team Cuba, the eighth pitcher of the night coming in for Cuba. We'll be right back. Team Japan, they're getting ready to celebrate. They now have a 10 to 5 lead over Cuba. They've scored four runs here in the ninth inning to break it back open. Three outs away now from winning it all. Here's the game track now presented by Intel Centrino Duo. And the two run homer by Cepeda in the eighth inning made it a one run game. But then Ichiro got a big base hit to right to make it seven to five. And this great slide and reach by Kawasaki, even though he was blocked off the plate. Look at that right hand. He got a finger in there, and even as Pastano was blocking him off the plate. Pistano, he lucky Pastano just did, didn't rip that right arm right out of its socket there. But uh, a lot more has happened since then. Fukudome came up as a pinch hitter, two run single. Ogasawara with a sacrifice fly, four runs at home, and now Jonder Martinez has come on from La Habana. See his record this year with La Habana in the uh, Serie Nacional. The shortstop. A nice pickup, backhanded flip to Gurriel. Well done there by Eduardo Perret. Last chance for Cuba. Japan three outs away from a World Baseball Classic Championship. The World Baseball Classic and now Team Japan with a 10 to 5 lead over Cuba with three outs of life left to Cuba. 
and uh, Akinori Otsuka trying to wrap it up. Fans, watch your team's out-of-market games live in this Major League season upcoming from anywhere in the world. Live Major League Baseball right on your desktop or laptop by going to ESPN.com and searching for MLB.tv. Sign up today. Well, this past Wednesday, Korea and Japan, and it looked bad for Japan. Jin Young-sung made this great throw to the plate, and uh, Iwamuro was thrown out, and then Jim Bong got that two-run single, and finally, oh, with the strikeout, much to the chagrin of Ichiro, Jay So planted the Korean flag on the mound at Angel Stadium in Anaheim, and it looked like Japan was dead and gone out of this tournament, beating, uh, having been beaten by Korea for the second time. But Team Mexico, with a major upset beating Team USA on Thursday, and Japan survived, rose from the ashes, and came here, and then in its third chance, did in fact defeat Korea, and now they are three outs away from beating Cuba. Miyamoto now at shortstop, replacing Kawasaki. Fukudome stays in to play left field after his pinch hit two-run single. Fukudome has turned into a, a, a secret weapon for Osan here these last two games after slumping all through the tournament. So here is Otska. Ariel Pestano left center field wide open spaces all the way to the 402 marker. Kinjo gets it back in. It's a double for Pestano. Down what there the people in Havana they are not going to give up. But John one of the things I wanted to mention earlier is one of the reasons the reason that Cuba was the home team is that they had a better record you know in, in the classic. Uh, some people may be wondering why they were the home team instead of Japan. Cuba five wins two losses in the tournament Japan with three losses. But again, once you get to this final round, whatever, I mean, as Team Korea learned, if they didn't already know on Saturday, they were unbeaten it yet. They were sent home after Japan finally beat them here in the ballgame Saturday night. Alexei Ramirez coming up now for Cuba, down 10 to 5 is Team Cuba. Now the first base umpire. Bob Davidson and the plate umpire Tom Hallian are hollering at somebody in the Japan dugout. Yeah, but how, I mean, is, is it that important? Well, Bob Davidson was the first guy to be upset by whatever they were yelling from the dugout. Well, I, they were saying that they weren't in the dugout. They had a foot outside the dugout. Two and one to Ramirez. Well, they were outside the dugout before. They were had their feet up here. There's a bunt, but foul by Ramirez. Now they need base runners. They need a lot of base runners. But they can get two or three guys on, then you get to guys like Enriquez and Guriel, Borrero, Cepeda. And then they could do some damage. They'll have to do an awful lot of damage if they're to stay alive in this one. They need five runs in this ninth inning to tie. Pistano, the runner at second. Eduardo Perret, the leadoff man on deck. Sprayed foul. Oh, and two the count remains to Ramirez who has a he hit a double off the left center field wall back in the third inning since then has popped a short and grounded into a double play although he hit a ball hard in the seventh inning into a double play by the way that double by Pistano to start off this inning the first hit allowed by Otsuka in five games in this tournament Akinori Otsuka playing for Team Japan and the uh, the Texas Rangers will be hoping that what they've seen from Otsuka in this tournament is a preview of what they'll see during the regular American League season upcoming. And that 
is heading foul along the right field line into the crowd. Ten runs, ten hits, and three errors for Japan. Five runs, ten hits, one error for Team Cuba. But that one error was a crusher. It opened the door in the ninth inning to it turned into a four-run Japan rally. They were leading six to five going in. Four runs scored, two unearned. Ichiro on the run. Out number one. Tagging up Pestano. Moving to third. One down, and here is Eduardo Perret. You know, years and years ago, the Baltimore Orioles took a tour of Japan, 1971. And that was the year after they had won the World Series. And many in the, the baseball leagues in Japan thought that Japan was ready to compete with Major League Baseball. The Tokyo Giants had won nine straight Japan series with the O.N. Cannon. Shigeo Nagashima, whom you mentioned earlier, Joe, and Sadaharu O with the great sluggers on that team. Now here is Parrett, runner at third, one out, and back to the screen. But, you know, the Orioles went there and, and played real well. And uh, the Giants or the All-Stars or whoever the Orioles played almost never beat them. And, and those were the Orioles of Brooks Robinson, Frank Robinson, Boop Powell, and all those great pitchers, Palmer, McNally, Cuellar. Dave McNally pitched a no-hitter, a nine-inning no-hitter in one of the games in that tournament. But now, all these many years later, Osan, as the manager, has his ball club just two outs away from winning this world tournament. And O said that he didn't know what the Cuban teams had been like in the past, but he did feel like this was the best team that Japan had ever put into an international tournament. Because they did send their amateurs for many years into these Olympics and World Cups and whatnot. That's into the hole. And the new shortstop, Miyamoto, will just hang on to it. It's an infield single for Perret. Pestano scores. It is 10 to 6, Japan. And the big hitters are about ready to come up now. Enriquez, followed by Guriel, Borrero, and company. Well, I, I think it's interesting because Sadahara O used to come over. You know, and, and play in spring training and get a chance to play against Major League Pitching. And I know there are a lot of guys, you know, Nagajima, I'm sure, could have played in the Major League. But overall, their depth and their the other players just were not up to speed to be able to play and compete with Major League Baseball players. But obviously, they've gotten better. One out, one on, one in. And Enriquez hitting 448 this year in the Cuban League. But he is hitless tonight, 0 for 4. And Enriquez made the error that got Team Japan started to the four run rally in the first half of this inning. That is called a strike. Two and one the count. But I would think that even Ichiro would have to rethink his statements about. What he, you know, that he made about Korea, and it would take him 30 years to catch up. Uh, I don't think it's going to take them 30 years the way that they've been playing, because Korea played great in, in the classic. They only lost one game. They did not make an error in the classic. They pitched well. They did everything well. And Enriquez fouls one back out of play. Well, the game is over. They'll have the presentation of the championship trophy. The sterling silver trophy, 25 inches tall, that weighs 30 pounds. And also the most valuable player award will be given. And all tournament team will be named. The runners up will each receive a round sterling, a sterling silver medallion. And that is strike three. And Otsuka now has brought Team Japan to within one out of winning it. And now Osan. Is going to go out to the mound, and he signaled for all of the, the infielders to meet at the mound with him and pitcher Otsuka, with Guriel due up next. Uh, I think he said, "Get him out." All right. 
or perhaps let's not celebrate until we get this guy out. You were talking about Ichiro, and his comments were actually, in some way, they were misconstrued. Right, because he wasn't talking about just Korea. Well, he was also saying that we will beat them so badly and so convincingly that they will all, you know, Korea, China, Chinese Taipei, realize that it will be at least 30 years before they can catch up to the quality of play in Japan. But I still think he would like to rethink that statement. <laughs> Or rephrase it, yeah. Because they look like they pretty, pretty much caught up yeah. with him there. Yeah. Instead of 30 years, he might want to say 30 minutes. But actually, I mean, I, I just think that it was country pride and it that made him say that because Japanese baseball has come a long way. But he, but he did also say he was hoping. He was his hope was that they would do this. So two outs and two strikes. Guriel the hitter. That's a ball outside. And all ball. the flash bugs are going off here. Yeah. Probably continue on each and every pitch until it is over. Team Japan getting ready to begin Grant. the celebration. Yulieski Guriel. And that does it. Strike three. Otsuka gets the save. The celebration begins. Team Japan has won the first World Baseball Classic. They have defeated Cuba 10 to 6. So the world has come together and we saw so many of the great players from Major League Baseball on teams like Venezuela the Dominican Republic Puerto Rico Team USA and down the list but suddenly we saw that there was a lot of other talent from around the world Korea burst through like a shooting star and they beat their longtime nemesis. Japan twice but finally Japan has risen from the ashes and under their manager Sadaharu Oh it was Japan that ends up winning it all and tonight they have defeated Cuba 10 to 6 the, the valiant Cuban team the group of amateurs up from the island nation of Cuba and they battle back hard in this ball game as well before finally falling short. And now the Cuban team comes out to the field in the midst of the Japan celebration and the Cuban team goes out to congratulate them on their victory. And that's a lot of class. That's showing a lot of class. And I think that everybody realizes this is what it's all about. And Osan receives the congratulatory handshakes from the the vanquished Cuban team a, a team that impressed O considerably with their play now stay tuned because on Sports Center which will be coming up very soon they will be look in back here at Petco Park on the trophy presentation to Team Japan and the MVP award we have been told however I guess we can tell you right now that uh, Daisuke Matsuzaka the starting pitcher for Team Japan tonight and the winner tonight who ended up going three and oh in the tournament he pitched 13 innings in the tournament and allowed only two runs and eight hits he has been named the World Baseball Classic most valuable player. Well I think it's very difficult to pitch pick a most valuable player because there were so many great games and so many important games and you know as you know my vote went to Ichiro because I think he did everything to lift this team you know to the championship but they couldn't have done it without pitching and so it's just it, you can choose from either side and I, and I think you know they they made a good choice. 
So congratulations to Sadaharu O oh and Team Japan. They are the World Baseball Classic champions. The inaugural World Baseball Classic has crowned its first champion, Team Japan. But all 16 nations represented in the tournament have given the world something to remember. Something that proves our national pastime is truly now a global event. Providing images that won the whole world over.